Hey guys, before we get into this episode, I want to let you know about our How to Charge a Client Guide, our 54-page digital download book that will teach you how to secure more money from your clients. From working with local businesses to some of the biggest celebrities and brands in the world, I will teach you everything I've learned about charging my clients over the past 10 plus years of my career as a freelance creator. In this guide, I walk through the process of charging clients step by step, explaining exactly how I analyze, negotiate, and land higher paying job opportunities. If you're interested in making more money as a creator, head over to shopbwnc.com and get the guide now. And we are back with another Black Window Cream podcast, new episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, aka Ben Real Verse World. And this week's special guest is my guy, Joe Larkin, a photographer, videographer, and producer who has worked with some of the biggest names in EDM like Diplo, Major Lazer, Nightmare, Flostradamus, and many more. Joe is currently touring around the world creating content for Diplo as his full-time videographer and photographer. Joe is also a co-founder of a production company called Curza that produces after movies for festivals and facilitates content for their network of major artists in the EDM space. So if you have ever wanted to create content for DJs on tour or at festivals, you definitely want to tune into this episode. Joe's story is actually insane and I didn't know about the long path he had to take to get to where he is today. Some of the things that we talk about are his first year living in LA after graduating from Full Sail University in Florida, where he sent hundreds of resumes out and bombed multiple interviews. The moment he had to decide between a stable job as a casting producer for American Ninja Warrior, a part-time editing gig at Insomniac, or going on tour for a month in Australia with a DJ named Party Favor. His early hustle to make a name for himself in the EDM space where he would literally fly himself out to major festivals in order to try and book six to seven artist gigs for the weekend. And it worked. The time he passed up shooting for an artist at EDC to make a video for a brand new artist named Nightmare, who ended up blowing up after Skrillex played one of his tracks live in his headlining set. A hilarious story about the time that his personal relationships in the industry got Diplo into a Virgil Abloh show that was completely sold out, and everyone in Diplo's team realized that he was the man. All of that and so much more. Joe dives into how to connect and develop relationships with artists, how he goes about creating viral Instagram content for artists like Diplo, and what he looks for in creators who want to work with Curza and their network of major artists. I'm stoked for you guys to hear this one, but if this is your first time tuning the podcast, you are probably wondering. What the fuck is Black With No Cream? Great question. Black Window Cream is the illest educational resource for content creators fueled by caffeine. Or at least I take my coffee Black Window Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We have thousands of members from all around the world working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our private group if you want to by going to bwnc.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join. All right, that's it. Enjoy the work week. Keep creating. Make sure to tune in every single Wednesday and Sunday for a new Black Window Cream podcast episode. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Black Window Cream. Subscribe to us on YouTube to access all of our educational content and share this episode out with someone who needs it. If you find it helpful, we appreciate that. And without further ado, I bring to you my episode with Joe Larkin in the most epic podcast intro ever created. Right, motherfucking now! Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. That's enough. We're back. All right. Podcast is on. Joe Larkin in the house. How's it going, bro? We are here. I'm very excited to do this. I'm well. How are you? I, I'm do. I'm doing good. It's Saturday. Happy to hear uh, it. We're both alive. We're yes. breathing. Happy. Decent air. Smiles. Yes. Beautiful eyes. Both of us. Check us out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just now meeting for the first time ever. Yes. So thank you for coming through and doing of this course, shit. I know it's like last me. minute and whatnot. I feel like you travel like a lot so I, this is rare that we just got this on the fly like this especially on a Saturday yeah I feel like yeah. are you usually gone every weekend yeah most weekends most weekdays um, I'd probably say I'm on the road like 300 days a year god damn yeah 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 it's nuts yeah. but uh, I love it you know I don't know. Happy, I, happy doing it. Did you ever listen to um uh fuck what was that hardcore band? They had this song called It's like I live my life on the road and then the breakdown would happen right after that and I was like oh, really? straight up 
that's yeah. the majority of me. Yeah, you know, I'm, so. I'm not a hardcore guy. So like, <laughs> okay. You know, right there's when you said band. that, I was like, oh, he lost me. No, 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 no. There's this band, and that shit would be the hardest part. I was like, yeah. But when they said that shit, I'm like, man, it's like living out of a suitcase is an art for, and a lot of people oh, yeah. can do it. And there's a lot of people that hate that shit. I'm sure we could talk about like suitcase packing for like an hour. Oh shit, yeah. You, know? you probably have it dialed now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, kind of, kind of yeah, switches like, up. I have my, like my usual stuff where I put my equipment, but like, there's no like uh pants go here and the right, socks. Right, 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 right. Yeah. It's kind of like stuff the socks where yeah, there's empty spaces. Exactly. And, in my shoes and shit. Yeah, yeah, like, right, right. <laughs> put the valuables in there too. Yeah, totally. I, I also feel like it's uh, like a thing where, where when you, when you pack, you have the best intentions. So like, oh cool, I'm gonna be staying at this hotel for two days. I'll put my shit in like the drawers. And I like put my <laughs> socks in the drawers and try to feel like a human for a little bit. And right. then as soon as like my clothes are all over the floor again and I just like, damn, just stuff it in the bag. It's so weird because like my, my pack will be immaculate and then the next day, like after the first hotel, like destroyed. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what do I do now? Um, so okay, so you live an interesting life. I, yes. and I'll have preface like who you are in our pre intro yeah, yeah. thing, but sure, I would sure. like it to hear it out of your mouth too. Like kind of how, uh, when you meet new people, how are you defining yourself as a creative? Cause you, you rec- I mean, I don't know how long you've been traveling with Diplo, but you've been shooting with him kind of directly. Are you like his, right. like yeah, his I mean, I'm guy. his tour photographer, right. tour videographer, I guess on road creative. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he has a whole creative team, but right. on the road is me. Right. Um, yeah. So I've, I've been with him about seven months and yeah, you know, it's, it's been, it's been awesome. I, yeah. His name's Wes. I, I love Wes. I love the team, Luke and Eli. That's like the main core team okay. manager, tour manager. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's been great. I'd probably say it's about seven or eight months now. I started right before, like right on Coachella, like right before Coachella. Okay. Word, right, right, right. Of last year. So you're doing that at the same time, micromanaging a company with two other partners. Right. Right. Which Curso, yeah. is that, how I mean, how how do you do that? Shit? Touring yeah, I mean, is like rough, it's know? interesting, right? Like yeah. to me, I always explain touring as like, uh, and I'd like to hear your take on it. But right. it's like life, every, real life freezes because then you're on call twenty four hours a day and you're in motion of like whatever's happening and everything else is kind of like invisible. So right. when you have to try to balance an entire business on the road, how do you deal with that? You know, it's 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 all about managing your time correctly because yeah. with the Diplo lifestyle, as I say, our, our tour schedule is, you know, I don't want to just say this cause you know, I'm on the team, but our tour schedule is probably crazier than 99.9% of people. Uh, his life is, I mean, right. great and, job capturing it. Uh, right. everything he, he posts a lot and all the time, his life is nuts. Like yeah, you guys are everywhere insane. on the planet all the time. Right. So, so picture that, but instead of like us being able to settle down, we're always on the move. So we, you know, we, we were just talking about Australia before we started recording. Yeah. Uh, we landed, well, I'll tell you about my day in Sydney. Yeah, we, please. We took that LA, the 10.30 PM, 16 hour flight to Sydney, landed in Sydney, went straight to surfing an hour and a half away. We didn't go to the hotel. Surfing? Yeah, yeah, okay. surfing. We're big, we're big surfers. Dope. I mean, I go surfing, I'm not very good, I suck. I've never done but it. Yeah, it was great, yeah. it's great, let's try it. Okay, but uh, yeah, so we went straight to surfing, surfed for two and a half hours. I filmed, I drone, and then, you know, joined them for a little bit. Um, and then we went there straight to a hike or we went to a waterfall. And then we came back to the hotel, finally had an hour to chill. And then we hiked up the Sydney Harbor Bridge because he was playing a DJ set, set on top of the Sydney Harbor Bridge. First person to ever do it. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. And then, we, you know, we did that, had to go down. And then that's where I start my photo editing process for right. him bang those all out and then after that i get on my computer get organized from the emails i've sent from my phone with curza and you know get organized of my personal i guess like like company life right so it's nuts it, this sounds so ridiculous the, i mean the next day we did it all over again the so next, yeah you you guys did you tour in australia you did a bunch yeah, of cities you, yeah like yeah. the top the main ones right yeah you know perth sydney uh, melbourne God, Brisbane, damn. yada 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 but, uh, but yeah, so it's like that no matter where we go. We'll do the same thing in Ibiza. We'll do the same thing in Africa. It doesn't matter where we go, we're there. And with our lifestyle, we'll be, you know, even even next week, we go from the Grammys to the Super Bowl to New York, New York to India, India to, you know, it's, it's we're everywhere. Yeah. The, it, there's no there's no flight that we won't take to right. like make a show, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's great. But, you know, he treats us super, super well. You know, we, we we're in, great spots and you know he, he definitely like takes care of the team to make sure that like we're 
yeah. we're good to go with everything because obviously our lifestyle is hectic. It's insane. Um, and how yeah. big? How big is the like the crew on that? Like a so Diplo production? It, it, it depends. You know, with, with Diplo with himself, it'll be uh, VJ and LD and uh, our production manager front of house, and right. then it'll be a tour manager the uh, road manager, and then there's me. Right. And so I, I guess, what is that, like six, Eight, including yes, Wes? Yeah. Like but with Major Laser, if it's a production show, because he's also in Major Laser, yeah, yeah. Um, that'll be, I don't know, probably like 30, 35. Right. It's, it's a major like production, sure. stage production, yada, yada, yada. So with, with that, it's like everyone's traveling. I mean, people always see a lot of the DJs are always on PJs and, and all that shit. Yeah. And that's Thankfully, a, I'm one of the guys, I guess. That gets to make a cut. But yeah, it also right. makes sense. And I don't know if the crew ever is in the PJ too. Or Sometimes if he has to get, LDVJ. Yeah. Because yeah, I feel like it's like, like you have to just get the main priority people that make the show happen, you right. know, on the plane. I think I talked to Neil about this too. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I, I remember there was one, there was one podcast that I remember you were talking about. Yeah. This. Cause it's like, it, it is important. It's like, uh, it have making sure that the whole squad can get there. But in the, the amount of shows he's capable of doing as Diplo, it's like, yo, you just said we're Super Bowl, then we're in New York, and we're blah, 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 we're here and here and here, and he wants to play like three shows in one night in two different cities, and it's like, right. get the squad to those places, do it, that's so <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, but totally. then, but on top of it, so so you're you're on the fly during the days, like while you're shooting and droning and going to the surf spots and all the stuff, you're firing off emails and dealing with client relations as yeah, well. Yeah, like on the side, because I, li- I don't like for them to mix too right. much, you know, I. I because Wes needs someone that that's there for Wes, right? Um, so I don't I don't ever really bring up Kurza to Wes, although you know Wes knows what it, what it what it is and what it's about. I don't really like to if you know when it's Wes time. I really try to stick to making sure that he's happy with everything he needs. Totally. Because you know obviously our lifestyle is go go go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to be ready for anything. Right. Um. So yeah, I'm definitely like a really good uh, phone email guy, yeah. and texter. Now. Right. So is it do you, and, and with your partners? Um. And shout out to Chris Yoder. He's getting on here the at man. some point. I don't know. He he also never stops. I'm gonna text him. Yeah. Tell him, tell him his, to get on. Yeah. I know. He's like next time I'm in LA. I'm there. Uh with you guys and the partners, like how, how do you guys kind of micromanage everything? I know I'm just getting straight into the business. Yeah, no, no, that's great. That. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Yoder and uh, winter halter are my two partners and without them, the, you know, the company, it couldn't run cause right. all of our lifestyles are crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, Yoder's with Zed yeah. um, with Diplo and then winter halters torn with Will Smith currently. So, okay, cool. you know, it's like a, yeah, we're, we're all, fine. we're all crazy. Right? right. And then we also have, our, uh, I guess, director of operations, I would call her, this girl, Laura, who's amazing. And then we had this girl, Izzy, who just got funded by Live Nation, so she's gone now. But Bye-bye. congrats to her, yeah. super stoked with nice. her. Um, but yeah, she, we, you know, we, we're on a group chat and we're all texting, we're all kind of helping each other out. Um, you know, we have like our main clients within the company that we'll take care of yeah. and uh, make sure that, you know, whoever we put on these clients, that, that they're good. Yeah. But, um, w- you know, if, if Yoder is on a plane to Saudi Arabia, like he'll be next week, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on top of it to make sure that no, nobody's waiting for emails on right. his side. Um, cause we're all CC'd. So, yeah. you know, we'll all be CC'd and make sure that we're all, you know, we're, we're kind of checking each other to make sure that I we're always, that. you know, keeping it going. Yeah. Um, definitely a huge team effort. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people think it's like impossible to, to pull things off like this, but right. it's definitely not like you guys have kind of cracked the code in making this. And when you go to your website, Trying. the clients list is just like, between the three of you guys, your knowledge and who you know, the network pool is so fucking huge. Like the Thank artist you. roster, this shit is, the, it's like all artists. It's like yeah, all yeah. of them in that space. <laughs> who you know do you want to work with? Yeah, exactly. Like we got them all there. Like, <laughs> But I mean, that's a lot of people to take care of and to be consciously focusing on making sure you're giving every single client their best, you know, window of time of you right, right. like to make yeah. sure that you're hitting all the bars make sure we're getting the right creators or whatever so like what would you, what would you say is the process right now um artists need someone for a one-off show or a tour are you guys kind of like saying all right well we have these vetted creators and we can attach you to them or or how do you guys go about doing dealing yeah, with you artists? know essentially um I'm gonna tweet this just a little bit yeah, yeah sure get that hd yeah oh, how do yeah. i sound it sound good <laughs> yeah you're good uh, cool so so yeah you know it, it it's a uh, it depends you know who's coming at us and what they want. Um, so thankfully, you know, we, we've been very blessed where a lot of people have started to come to us and you know, that we, we still do outreach to people we really want to work with. Right. Um, but we have so many business that's coming in that we try our best to, I don't know, like we, so the, all right, an email will come in yeah. and uh, the first thing we'll ask is, you know, what are your deliverables? What kind of creative, like, are you guys doing? Can you send us like two videos that you really, really like that you'd love to see on this next tour? Right. And then also the big thing is personality too. Mm. Um, 
you know, you guys, you've been on tour, and, and you know, a lot of people watching this, or, or I guess, uh, you know, listening to this, yeah, have been yeah, on sure. tour too. And uh, y- nobody wants to tour with a weirdo. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a really big thing. Tour family, those two words, they go together because you know, your tour family is a family. Yeah. Um. So I'm really big on placing people that I know are going to get along. Mm-hmm. Um. On an you know off the stage sense, right? Um. So we'll ask those questions. They'll send over a bunch of stuff, and then yeah, you know, we'll, we'll go into our Rolodex. We have a whole database with hundreds of shooters. I believe. It. Um. You know, we we've we've you know we've vetted a couple. You know, probably t- tens of them. Yeah. Um. And uh. You know, we'll we'll go in and see who we think would be right. And we'll reach out to them, make sure they're available first off, and then we'll send them their portfolio that we've created. We have like a whole, you know, portfolio database with everyone too. We'll send them, you know, three to five shooters that we think would be great for their tour, and then they can choose from that. That's so dope. Yeah, that seems like such a good uh, process, I guess, because it's like you're putting people on. You're also giving the artists like options, like Olive Cart or something like they get yeah, to pick, right. like pick and choose their battles, but. And it's also nice to know that, yo, know, maybe you try one and it just doesn't click. Which we've had. And then you have more. You have right. more. You know what I mean? And they can kind of figure that out. Well, yeah. You know, the cool thing is that our, our guys, you know, their work, their work is very, very good. Right. Right. So even if it doesn't click, the artists and the management, they still know that they got quality work. For it sure. It just didn't work on the personality side. So yeah. it's not like a slight to anyone. Just, hey, it wasn't a fit. Let's right. see who else you have who may be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're, we've been really good about retaining, you know, a bunch of business if it, if it doesn't. It doesn't work out the first right. time. Yeah, because I mean, you can't. There's no way to truly know that two Never people know. are going to click. Right? I've had it. I've had it on tour with certain artists. You yeah. know, it was fine, but you know, we just didn't click personality wise. Right. So there's right. no hard feelings. Yeah. It's just you know, facts. Right. It, okay. I can, I, mean, I can talk about this, and we will talk about this a little bit more. Sure, but sure. I think like, let's get. I want to know more about you and how you kind of figured this whole system out. But before that, it's like as a creative, you coming up in this. Where are you from originally? I'm from Boca Raton, Florida. Where the, so where is that at? It's like, uh, so it's like 30 minutes north of Fort Lauderdale and an hour north of Miami. Okay, dope. Yeah, yeah. It's, cool. it's where everybody's grandparents go to live out their later years. Really? Yeah. It's like a retirement city? Retirement city, super Jewish. I am Jewish. Dope. Shout out to the Jews. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, it's 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 either you're a really young kid growing up in Boca or you're really, really old. Right. And, you're just hanging out. Um, so, you so it's know, a quiet beach town. Yeah. But what, it's, what was it's, the life like for you there? It was great. You yeah. Know, um, yeah. I loved it. There's, you know, there's, it's really a safe, mm. safe uh, city. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I had a really good childhood with parents. Parents were together until freshman year, but they stayed. They were like best friends, you know, throughout. That's dope. Um, but I always knew I wanted to be in entertainment, you yeah. know, with, with uh, even growing up. You know, I was always, I want to say the class clown, but I was always the guy that was very outgoing. You yeah. Know, I think I got voted most outgoing um, back, nice. you know, back then. Nice. You know, prom king nominee. That's right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, I was always, I was always entertaining people in a sense. That's, that's what I like to call it. I didn't really, I really hadn't really like picked up a camera then. Um, and then I went, I graduated high school and I went to this college, like a film school called Full Sail University. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, shit, man. Orlando. I want to go to Full Sail so bad, bro. Yeah. I mean, the marketing is great. Yeah. Right? They're, they're so like, if you don't go, you, you'll you never make it. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you, okay. So you go there, but first, wait, before okay. you get into this, all right. it be coming like before you're picking up a camera, right. you're finding ways to entertain. Like what would be like some of the sources of ways you'd so, entertain people? So like I, I like had this thing, I would call it J-Lark Productions. Okay. And you know, me and my friends really into like mixtapes, you know, hip hop mixtapes yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, we'd have Wiz Khalifa and XV coming out with stuff and Mac Damn, Miller XV, when he was coming. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, actually it was the truth. Right, yeah. Um, I opened up for XV. I no used to way. rap and shit. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. He just like, just released an album like two really? weeks ago. Yeah. I love to hear it. Yeah, I, I got to check it out. Duke but, Crushed. Yeah. But anyway, best. sorry. Right. Make, Sean make Christopher, safe. if you know. Yes, but yeah. there you go. Um, so we loved, we love everything going on and we couldn't rap, but you know, we were just trying to have fun with it. So we would sit on garage band and like, you know, kind of pick up beats. And then I would sell like these like hip hop, like, I guess like CDs to like really? my friends. Cause it would be funny. You yeah. know, like we weren't taking it seriously, but it was just fun to do. Like, like you guys school. made the mixes of all these songs. In no, garage like band? we would, we would, yeah. In garage band, we would like like take beats and then we had like our friends rap over the beats. Oh, you guys were actually making like f- right. some shit. Yeah. I mean, okay. I guess right. like not really, right. it's really bad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we would do that and then have fun. I was in plays um, right. when I, when I used to go to like camp 
And then uh, I would also like just like entertain people. I, I liked sports. I, I played lacrosse throughout yeah, sure. high school. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that was so funny. This like, God, it bring back memories. It's I haven't crazy, talked about right? that in so long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we were having fun. I remember I gra- when I graduated, like I had some people sign in my yearbook, like good luck with JLark Productions. Like, I, like they thought I was like taking it seriously, um, which I thought was just the funniest yeah. thing because you know, I, I never wanted to, I guess like produce music, right. you know, like right. that wasn't it. But you know, I, I had JLark Productions throughout, throughout college, but so tight, but yeah, it was, it was well, it's, it's, it's cool. It's like, it, I think that's an interesting thing. Cause I think a lot of people think you have to have some sort of camera or something to be able to like film yourself, make YouTube videos, do et cetera. Right. But like you guys being able to swap around and like make music. I, that's some of the most, even if it is a joke, look at lonely Island, bro. Yeah, no, totally. Like that was my inspiration. I remember before I actually thought rap, like I could rap rap and that shit. That's a whole nother story. But like, yeah, I remember like looking up to those, comedians that could take music and like make versions of it that's totally. fun or whatever and like didn't take themselves too serious but they were super creative you know what i mean right and that shit was inspiring so like, good you just wanted to do that all the time yeah so those guys were like blowing up when i was in college i'm 27 I don't know okay we're, are, i'm 31 yeah. okay cool yeah. yeah so so those guys were blowing up when i was like in college and like um you know seeing these guys that's when i first picked up like my first camera which is like a, a nikon like d3100 and then a t2i shortly after canon yes but um but yeah, you know that. So seeing those guys, I was like, "Wow, these guys! These guys are amazing." I made like little Lonely least, Island. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it was Lonely Island. Then there's a uh, Good Clean Fun or something. There's a uh, Good Neighbor stuff or something. I don't know. I'm gonna find it. Yeah, I'm gonna send I don't it know to who you. that is. But um, but yeah. So that stuff started happening in college, and and Full Sail was really cool. They would give us like challenges and like try to help us like. I guess like make smaller short form videos mm-hmm. um, just for like fun to like build our skills. Um, I got out of the high school stuff. I hope that that's okay. Yeah, no, you I'm know, good. I'm totally. cool. No, I'm cool. But I just I just wanted to know because it's like you right. know how do pe- people some people don't know so they don't know how to fucking like express themselves outside of needing a camera and then they say they can't because they can't afford one or whatever right. you know what I mean. That it's like nah, you can do. There's so many different yeah, ways. Yeah, to totally, totally. But but you bought the camera for video. Uh, well, I bought it because it was every, everyone started like grabbing these things, and and you know, with full sale, they teach us how to use really really expensive cameras, right. like the stuff I couldn't really afford. Yeah, of course. And I, I probably still it's like hundred, you know, it's like the Alexis yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah. you know. But uh, and so you know, I was like, okay, cool. What what can I do? And I would ask my friends. You know, my, my friend had just got like a five D Mark II, right? And then someone else had just got a T two I. Like, what what do you think? And I did my research, and uh, yeah, you know, I started with the D thirty one hundred, which got stolen. Damn. Yeah, it sucks. Um, in, in your small town. No, I was in Orlando. Safe town? I was in Orlando. Oh yeah. yeah, you moved to Orlando. Right? I was in the States. <laughs> there we go. Call it. No, yeah, Orlando. There's safe parts, and then there's not so safe right. parts. Um, yeah, actually, I'll tell you some stories about Orlando. It's just, <laughs> it's just so funny. Um, but wait, how did it get stolen? Uh, so it was at my friend's house, who actually like became my roommate after it. He's been my roommate for nine years now. Still saying, my roommate he's actually today. not my friend anymore. Yeah, yeah. He stole that shit. But his old roommate, I guess, like took it or something, or he had a house party, and it just disappeared. Damn. Yeah, I never found it. That sucks. Yeah, um, sucks. Um, got a T2i after, which thankfully was a better, you know, better fit. Yeah, I right. Guess, better camera for me. And uh, yeah, you know, I just, I guess I would just like take photos every now and then. We had like a black and white like photo class, um, which I thought was really, really important. And I still think it's important for anyone to yeah. like, just like learn. Because black and white, I don't know, you don't really worry about the colors. It's all about composition and like trying to show something and like gain emotion from, you know, still. Um, so yeah that class was really really beneficial for me it really helped me like i guess like like understand composition and and kind of flow or whatever and um yeah i just started making like the these little little videos for fun you know music videos um you know and uh you know hip-hop music videos right they, they loved it and uh yeah it was really bad it was really <laughs> bad <laughs> but um, those were, the, were to make those videos was that like instructed by the school was that like projects that they would give you to like just um, get you guys going you know i've always been a go-getter so yeah i mean some of them have been like were instructed like the the black and white stuff but right. like the music videos they they were all me like right. I, I would always like you know try to find these clients because thankfully with full sale there's a whole there's different categories so there's music production there's show pro there's film gaming whatever um so a lot of, a lot of hip-hop guys went to school for music production so i kind of linked with them and uh you know i was like hey you know i got a camera right what's up yeah. you know like let's help me help you right vice versa um and i remember i would like 
and I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure this has been talked about before. You know, you know these old like hip hop music videos, man. Like, oh, yeah. oh, I got a hundred dollars and I got like an eighth of weed. You yeah. know, like I, I hook it up, man. Yeah. And like I don't smoke weed. Yeah, so me I'm either. Like, uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, right. uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like maybe just like a couple hundred more. Yeah. Um, Sell the weed, maybe. Right. Like, right. Give me that money. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I was like. I was like, all right, like whatever. I just want to make videos right now. Started making these videos. Um, my friend, because I went to school in Florida, I had a bunch of friends in Florida. Right. And my friend had started a like promotional music promotional company in Gainesville at UF, and he was helping promote like a bunch of like this one like EDM is like blowing up in a sense. Okay. Um, and like this is Orlando was like a really big hub for dance music. But talking about that later, um, he started a promotional company called Anatomy Promotions. I think they're like defunct now, you know, it's a college right, right, thing. Right, right. And um, he would bring like Steve Aoki and uh, Tiesto and Porter Robinson, dance music acts to Gainesville. And he would ask me, hey, can you shoot this for my for my promotional company? And I would say, hell yeah. Yeah, know, right. It. You know, it gives me an opportunity to like go party at UF with the boys. And um, so I went up there and I remember like filming these concerts and I was like, damn, like this is sick. Like, right. like I, I'm like immersed in it. And Were you a I, fan of the music? Oh, I love it. I okay, love it. So still already. to this day, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I love dance music. Yeah. Um, you know, I would, I would go to shows. So I, I did that, you know, video sucked, of course. Like I was stoked on them. Like it's so funny going back on like Facebook There's memories like, and like seeing like 10 years ago today, Delete. like Steve Delete. A. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, I can't yeah. believe I said that or showed yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Know? Um, but yeah, you know, I, I've always, back to Orlando, yeah. I've always been a fan of uh, dance music. And so my every single time, like I, I needed, I was like stressed or like needed to get out. Like there was uh, a party on Wednesday called Smile for the Camera at Roxy, like this club in Orlando. It's defunct now. It's called Guilt, which they actually still throw EDM shows. Um, but I would just go there and I would just go, I, I guess like rage, yeah. and, like have fun with the friends. And, you know, I remember seeing like Skrillex for like $10. Damn. And, you know, it's just a bunch of, bunch of big, big guys yeah. um, in small, small like club venues. That'd be so fun. Um, oh, it was the best, you know? And, and, and I loved, I loved just having fun and dancing and doing my thing you know I'm a, I was always the guy in the middle like starting yeah, stuff yeah, so yeah. you know I, I I did that and uh you know that was great for two years I was going to move to Atlanta Georgia because I wanted to originally I was in TV and movies which I'll slowly get into but um yeah I I wanted to move to Atlanta because the movie scene was like blowing up and then I think it was my mom like convinced me she was like Joe just like spend a year in LA everyone goes to LA yeah you know? and so I was like all right like that's probably that's probably a good idea you know I, Atlanta's not proven yet there's a lot of movies going there but I'm not quite sure like this is it right um and they had just started like at that time it was like Walking Dead was shooting there right and, right the tax incentives yeah, were crazy everyone was, everyone going, was going, going there right um and so, and my roommate was from Atlanta, who's my roommate to this day in LA. Yeah, right. Um, and so he was like, I'm just, I'm going to come to Atlanta. Um, I'm going to go to Atlanta. You know, you can do whatever, right. but you're more than welcome to come. Right. Um, I moved to LA. Um, I like left everything. You know, I broke up with my college girlfriend. You know, I had no friends in LA. I had like a couple friends that had graduated like earlier than me. Yeah. Um, and so I, w I was, I was living in their apartment complex, thankfully, but, uh, you know, I, I, I had, I was alone, you know, in, in my, in my room and I, I had really, really high hopes and expectations. You know, I'm in LA, I'm going to get a job right away within three years. I'm going to be a huge, you know, producer. Yeah, 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 right. Um, doesn't work out like that. <laughs> Never does. Never you does. Know, um, I was, you know, I moved out with no contacts really. Um, oh, God. and, uh, yeah, it was the worst year of my life. Well, I mean, you get here and, it, and it's, I don't think a lot of people understand. It's all here, but right. understanding how to see it and be a part of it is a whole nother hustle. Like, right. it's just, you got to know people. You got to figure out how to network. You got to understand how it works. There's levels to right. this shit. Like, it's oh, intimidating. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's nuts. And uh, it's it's nothing, it's, it's so different from any other industry that even you know, your, your friends, parents who are successful, um, they can give you advice, but they don't, it's entertainment. It's mm -hmm. a whole different beast. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a whole different way about going for, for the, through things. Right. So yeah, my first year here, um, was the worst year of my life. Oh, I was God. like, I, you know, sending out hundreds of resumes. Again, I'm a go-getter man. Like I want to get a job. Right. So I was sending out hundreds of resumes, the interviews I would get, um, I didn't, I didn't nail him cause I was so nervous and I was so, uh, <laughs> I was so like, I was like, who, 
who do they who do they want me to be yeah right? so like i would dress up spiffy and i would you know go in i remember i had like this uh this interview for an internship with this management company that like managed like robert downey jr and like adam scott and, like badass massive, people right yeah massive and actors the guy comes in you know he sits down you know slap slouched and uh you know he's, he's like so what's up man like you know why do you want to work here like super cool like the dude yeah you know? the nicest guy you could and, ever yeah and right. i'm like i'm like well sir you know <laughs> I, I feel like your office would be a great environment for me to you know he's like nerd next yeah he, next he goes he goes no this place is a piece of shit dude like just be you and i was like you know i, I still didn't do it because i was so nervous but i didn't get that job <laughs> Um, but after that, I, yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> You're right, right. Um, but after, because I mean, you know, it's you know, looking back now, at ten years now or eight years, it's like, damn, dude, like, you know, what, yeah, what's well, up, man? You're right. You know. Um, but yeah, you know, so so that happened, and then after that, I was kind of just thinking to myself and self reflecting. This is like six or seven months into my like LA stay. No job. No job. Um, you know, I had gotten like three to four interviews, and uh, how are you affording to do this? my parents for the first year oh thankfully they yeah shout out rent. to them yeah dude Damn. huge shout out and i'll and i'll always admit that right you know, my parents yeah, hooked it up for the first that's year that's insane um yeah so i was like damn like how how am i gonna do this um and i got i finally got this internship at this dance they like they like manage dancers like actual dancers yeah um and it didn't it ended up not working out but that was like another six months of my life that was gone but what it taught me you know, I, I take I take everything you know with with knowledge, yeah, I guess, whatever. Um, that that really it really showed me stuff of like the first taste of like what this industry can be if you don't look out for yourself and you don't know what to look for. Mm. Um, and thankfully, after that, I got a I got a I, on Craigslist. I got this PA gig with uh, America's Got Talent, right? And I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna do this. You know, they're having LA auditions. It was a three day yeah. three day audition. Um, or three day, like three days of working as right. a PA for their auditions. And, um, you know, I did it. I called up my roommate cause they, they said, if you know anyone else, let me know. I called up my roommate who was living in Atlanta and I was like, Hey dude, come out for three days. Right. Like, come, come hang, hang in LA. I'll show you what LA is all about. Do this PA gig with me. We'll both make, you know, it's 125 yeah, bucks a day, right. you know, like yeah. nothing. Maybe if pay for the flight. Right. Right. He's like, all right, cool. Come out. Um, thankfully he never left after he came, that. He came out He came stayed? out for the three days and wow. then left LA and never left. And was he in the same, like... In TV production. Yeah, he still is goal. to this day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, so yeah, kind of fast forward a little bit. Um, I started getting more and more PA gigs and I finally... How I got out of this, like, dance internship was X Factor was starting a new season and I was able to snag like a PA position on for X the Factor whole season. for the whole season. Dope. Yeah. So I told him, I was like, Hey guys, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. You know, they were pissed. I was like, whatever, dude, like you, you know, you, you were the worst to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like, I have nothing else to tell you except like, you like, yeah. Like he even told like one of like the managers at the company who became like one of my good friends, like all oh, like little does he know we're working with X factor and I don't, I don't think he's gonna be able to work there anymore. Like just like BS. Dude, like, I'm a stop. PA. Why yeah, are you trying it's to like, burn It's like, bro, I'm making nothing. No money. Like, right. let me be, right. like, let me let just me try to figure this shit out. <laughs> right. Right. Fuck. I hate assholes, man. Oh, it's the worst. And you know, I, I, I've been, as you're going to see, I've encountered a lot of them in entertainment. Um, so yeah, yeah. I believe it with the route you're going. Oh like. yeah. So, you know, I was in TV, I was working, working, working. Uh, I got a job at Dick Clark productions, um, kind of doing like PA stuff. They promoted me their office coordinator to sub kind of like sub for like when the, the original office coordinator was in like Africa with her family or something. Okay. Um, I did that. I got recommended for a job at an experiential marketing company. Um, and they like, they like brokered like really cool deals with like Jay Z and stuff like that. I was like, all right, cool. Like Spotify, this is like this. I'm really, really stoked for this. Um, it didn't end up working there. I really, it was not, that was actually, I've only been fired from one job. It was yeah. that job. Really? I was, a, I was, ex I was the second executive assistant to the CEO and uh you know it's one of those where we just didn't get along but we mm. really didn't get along you know i like you and the ceo yeah yeah I, which <laughs> will never work out yeah, that's never gonna happen <laughs> right right so with me you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm me like yeah. we're talking now like like i'm not faking it for cameras right, like, right, whatever. Right. yeah i'm me i'm chill yeah like, I'm, I'm gonna slouch i'm gonna talk like yeah. how i talk right. i guess you know and uh he didn't like that he wanted a very professional person um, and so it just didn't work out. Um, so that happened. 
And I went back in TV, thankfully, some PA gigs, worked my way up, and I started casting TV shows. Um, I got on the casting side. So American Ninja Warrior ended up calling me, said, hey, we need you, uh, associate casting producer. I had worked with them for like a one-off, um, right. you know, the season before. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, hey, you know, come on. You know, I, I really like this guy, Jeffrey. Um, and he's the man, I'm still friends with him this day. He's like, hey, I need you for the season. So I went out for the season. I ended up working with Ninja Warrior for like, two or three years as a uh, associate like casting producer. So w w when you say that, like you, you're going on the show to cast the people that are going to compete. Right. And is that like ongoing? Like, cause every episode's new people. So, so it's, it's like a seasonal basis. So it's, it's basically, I, I, I was with them like eight months a year, I would say. So we would have, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I guess casting process, which would take like three or four months okay. uh, with a deadline for applications. Cause you know, there's so many people applying for this show. Yeah. Um, so basically my job through, through there and this, in the beginning of that was we would get in applications, but we also do outreach to a bunch of people. Like, like for me, one of, one of my jobs that I like kind of made my job was yeah. I would find like NFL athletes and different, different athletes and, um, you know, actors to try to be on the show. You know, I've I, like, like to pull celebrities. Right. 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 And how I would do it is Twitter, you know, it's like 2013, 2014 right. now. And, um, you know, I would do it through Twitter. I would send out tweets to people. Like I'd tweet like at Michael B. Jordan and, uh, you know, <laughs> Travis Kelsey, um, NFL player, you know, stuff like that. With and, their uh, Twitter account? No, with my with Twitter your account. personal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, like, I also knew I was like, I was like, cool. Like let's start getting some, you know, maybe yeah. get some cool follows out right. of this and I can use them for the future. Yeah. Um, so I would tweet at these people and it was crazy. Like people would like, resp like Michael B. Jordan, like responded to me. Really? I was like, Oh, this is like, this is cool. Man. Yeah. You know, didn't obviously didn't work out. Right. Um, but you know, I, I had like Simon Rex who's dirt nasty. Yeah. Of you course. Know, um, dirt nasty, man. Yeah. yeah man. Yeah, well, great. Great. Yeah, guy. Legend. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he was on the show or like was almost on the show. I don't know. I don't know what happened. And then, you know, Travis Kelsey, um, and a bunch of NFL players, yeah. John Ryan, uh, Seattle Seahawks, you know, Super Bowl champ, he's a kicker, Steve Weatherford, yada, yada. Anyways. Right. Mad people, people. Yes. People started, you know, coming to me and, you know, I thought that was super cool. And then there was, uh, I don't know how we, how we got him or if it was from a tweet, but I got connected to the, uh, CEO of Cliff Bar, like the actual, I Cliff listened Bar. to, uh, what podcast, um, how we built this, that, that they interviewed that dude. It's oh, really? crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's the man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he sent over he did like, it? Yeah, he did it. What the fuck? And he said he was so funny. He sent me like boxes on boxes of Cliff Bars. Really? So thank you. Yeah, Wait. I brought him to the office. Some nice, but I also kept a couple for myself. How do you do? Um, did he God, make I don't it? remember. Do you even watch so after you get him on, or is it just I like watch moving it on to the fun. next one? Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, you obviously know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, but I still watch it. So, you know, during that four months, people are coming in. We're reviewing all these applications, and we're reviewing videos, and we're calling the guys, saying, "Hey, you know, your video could be better if you did this, or hey, oh, this wow. application question could be enhanced." Because what we want to do is we want to we want to soup them up and make them look super strong and kind of show the story. So when we pitch them to the executive producers, um, they can easily tell, okay, cool. This guy, you know, this guy has, you know, either a great story, this guy's fit, or this guy can do the course. Right. Um, there's a bunch of different factors that really yeah, go right, into right, the right, show. Right. Um, so, you know, we were doing that. Um, once people got picked, we would then go in and, uh, you know, prep for these shows. And during shoot days, we would play, I guess, talent wranglers or talent producers in a sense. Sure. Um, <clears throat> where we would be with the talent the whole time, making sure they're good, they're ready, they're good to go. And uh, we do that throughout up until Vegas. Um, and Vegas always fell during uh, a festival called Electric Daisy Carnival EDC. Sure. Um, and they were like right next to each other always. So I thought that was really fun because I'm a dance music fan. Yeah, but right. Anyways, throughout those two to three years, um, those are really, it's really, really long, like 12 to 14 hour jobs, you know, like there's, there's no, it was fun because I had a really, really great crew, but it's stressful because you're working, 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 working. A lot. Uh, right. So again, how I would de-stress is I would go, go to, to the festivals. EDM concerts, right. you know, I, I would go to Exchange LA and Avalon was popping back then. Um, it's called, it's called something else now, but I used to go to Create Nightclub Academy, it's called now. Um, and yeah, so I would go to these clubs and I was always used to see these photographers and videographers with these DJs and uh, I'd, I'd always like wait and I'd always be like oh cool I'm gonna be in the recap maybe like I'm gonna get my photo taken like it'd be cool to see it on like someone's Instagram and I would never see it either w what would happen is I would never see the photos or videos or if I saw the video recaps I just didn't think they were that good back then yeah 
Um, and so it's like 2014 and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe this could be like cool for me to do during the weekends. Um, and it also be like my access to get backstage and like mingle with my like favorite like musicians or celebrities right. or whatever. And had you been like during this whole process of trying to no, find work, you have been shooting the camera, not holding a camera. No. Okay, cool. No. So I didn't know. So this is access ticket for you. It's like, if I figure this out, I can get right. It. But my friend who, I, you know, was my like festy bestie as I'll call it, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> this guy, right. yeah, I know, I don't name. Know. Ra- rave name, you right, know, whatever. Yeah. Um, this guy, James Davis, um, he goes by JD two pictures, the music video director. Um, um, he he was like, oh, I know how to shoot a camera. And I was like, cool, like maybe like I'll get the clients and I'll help produce it. And then like me and you, we can go out and shoot these clubs mm-hmm. together. And, uh, you know, I can learn from you while you do that. Right. And so, you know, I, I remember I and I posted this on my Instagram like a couple times, but like I'll, I like would send these guys like pitches almost, but on Facebook, like Facebook Messenger, I'd send them like like three paragraphs of like why like we'd be good for you and why we would do stuff differently. And uh, I was so surprised because when I, when I sent that, I guess it was really well ordered or something because like a bunch of people started responding to me. Like and, and you're hitting these to the artists direct on their so, Facebook so, page. Yeah, or something. but what I'm doing is I'm not going for the top dogs like the Tiestos or Skrillexes. Yeah. I'm going for people lower on their management company. Like mm. they're still, I'm, I'm looking up these guys' managers, seeing who they manage. And I'm not going for the Skrillexes. I'm going for the people that are just coming up or yeah, just growing. Yeah, dog genius. Bro. Right. Because right. then they're going to see your shit and then they're going to want it for their top dogs. Right, exactly. So Smart. Yeah, so I did that, um, and people would respond to me, and I started meeting with these managers, and uh, you know, I this is my weekend thing. Like, I'm not really looking for money. You know, I, I kind of, I kind of did a couple ones for free. You know, and then I found out on social media, like Instagram was just blowing up now, and Facebook, people were getting like millions of views on like stupid viral video of Facebooks, where it's people dancing to your song. You know, it's funny, yeah, yeah, funny yeah. videos, people dancing to your right. song, and so I was like, and so then I went to these guys, and I was like, hey look look at these let me make these videos for you let me you know let me it's just me getting into to that more right i was like let me make these funny viral videos for you to just to i guess like immerse myself so that that my name is always in their in their heads or whatever um so i'd start making these stuff and i kind of i kind of started making these like like dumb viral videos that would get like a million views but like what's like, an example like what, what do you mean it would be like it's like, funny, it's like, like- it's just of the picture car, picture like a grease dance scene okay but it's over an edm track like oh, that's it i got you it's just like stupid just like videos. S- s- dumb videos like it's like uh that remember that video that those goth kids that are like moshing outside exactly. and then you put whatever song to it okay got right. it. So it's like mimi type shit it's mimi type stuff but someone's got to do it yeah, like someone has even to. though it's super easy like the managers still don't know how to use like premiere right, you right, know? right like right, so right. i was like cool like drop yeah. drop export yeah exactly control m good right. to go you know yeah um so yeah so i would start doing that and i would you know i started getting paid a little bit um i remember there was like my first offer i got um was with this guy party favor and he's like come to edc me and james come to edc come shoot me for edc and make a recap video and that was like my first actual like show recap we we had made so like i don't know how but like we like got into one of the biggest festivals in the world, you know, yeah. a month, a month after sending out these messages. And, uh, you know, that was our, that was our first recap. Had they seen any, they hadn't seen, you didn't like make mock versions of it or no, I mean, J- James had made like, cause again, I, I, I was just yeah. a TV guy, you right. know? Um, and so James had made, uh, a funny, like not funny, but he had made like a, not necessarily even a music video, but like a 30, 45 second piece right. um, for some artists. I don't even remember his name. And, uh, we pit, we like would pitch that be like this is our quality of work but like this is what we can do for right you. right um and so yeah people would start giving me shots and i would start working more and more and more as like a a club i would I'd work for the club um and i would like make recaps for the club not right. necessarily the artists yet i really didn't care who i was working for at right. the time i just wanted to be in, yeah. the, in the scene and on monday through friday you're doing ninja warrior shit and on monday and friday i was doing ninja warrior stuff okay right. yeah yeah so so I started doing that. I started touring a little bit during the weekends with like lower level artists. And then I remember, and this is funny because uh, Cash Bunny, yeah. same story with her. I know. I, that's why I was going to say, I was like, have you heard this shit? Because Cash is, it's, right. you guys need to meet if you don't know each other. No, yeah, we know each other. We, we worked right. on Lost Lane. Together, All right, so good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know this until I, I, I saw your yeah. your podcast was that, uh, you know, Pasquale posted, I need people 
to uh, I need editors and I need video animators. Right. And so I applied just for fun. This is like probably like six or seven months. Actually, probably like a year, a year plus of me like just like doing these side gigs during the weekend. Um, you know, I need video editors. Right. I sent I sent my stuff because I had since. James had since like gone back to doing his thing, and I still I, I knew how to use a camera then, and I was also like still pretty crappy, yeah. but like you know I could Figuring I could out. get through. Um, I had always known how to use Premiere, but I could get through a recap now. And people needed content, and the, yeah, it sounds like yeah, there wasn't the a ro- ton of- the rise is still it's still going way up for the need for content yeah. as it is even today. Yeah, thanks. you know. Um, sure. So I, I applied and I got a call from this guy Bunny, who's a creative director in Insomniac. I'm telling the same story as Cash now, yeah. you know, and. Uh, you know, I didn't pick up because it was an unknown number. And then I looked, I, I uh, listened to the voicemail, and, and it was this guy named Bunny. And I was like, "Who the, you know, who the fuck's Bunny. named Bunny?" You know, yeah. like what? I was like, is this real? Um, so I called him. I called him, and uh, <laughs> Bunny. He yeah. could be your new festy vesti or whatever. He could be new festy vesti, <laughs> right? So lame, right? So no, stupid. I love that shit. <laughs> that when you said that, I was like, I wonder if I literally was like, Cash Money said a lot of shit like this because she had her whole little squad, and they would go to the festival. What are they? It's the, the rabbit ears, yeah. right? Well, yeah. Dave, remember what they were called? What was catch? Base bunnies, yeah, man. Base bunnies. The base bunnies. Right. Bunny calls you fessy besties. This is right. a great. It's, it's so lame. Like a great culture. list of it's words. So funny. <laughs> like, yeah, it's great. Shout out to you, catch boy. This shit is funny. You're the All best. Right. Go on. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So leaves you a voicemail. Yeah, leaves a good voicemail, and I'm like, oh man, like I need to. Uh, I'm gonna call him back. So I call him back. Um, I'm in the Insomniac offices the next week. Uh, I meet this guy, Charlie, who's the lead editor at Insomniac. And uh, he's like, yeah, dude, like we just, we're like really, really backed up. Like we really need like part-time editors. Can you do this? And I was like, well, I have this job, but I can come in like after maybe. And he was like, cool. Like, honestly, like whatever hours you need, just come in and like, we'll give you like projects and just work on the projects. Right. 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 So what ended up happening is I would work at Ninja Warrior like nine to five, nine to seven, nine to eight or whatever. Isn't that in Vegas? Uh, no, that's the fi- the finals are in the Vegas. The finals are in Vegas. The offices are in Burbank. Okay, got it. Or so I don't know here. where they are now, but yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And so, and so I was working like nine to seven, call it Ninja Warrior. Yeah. I would leave that job, go eat quick, go straight to Insomniac, which is in Beverly Hills. And it's another hour drive. Uh-huh. Um, I would edit, let's just call it from like nine to 1 a.m. every day, like or the weekdays, you know, Monday through Friday. And then I would tour when I could or like do these gigs during the weekend. And so, yeah, I was essentially doing three jobs for like seven months. Oh my and uh, God. yeah, and it wasn't because like I wanted the money. It was like, you know, you you know they were all paying me, but it was because yeah. I loved it, man. Yeah. Like, this is so cool to me, and especially being an insomniac. Like, dude, right. Like, what is going on? Man? Yeah. Um, but working three jobs and having that kind of lifestyle is it's messed up. And man. for those like, who don't know or haven't heard cash, could you explain insomniac and like why yeah. you would want to work for someone like, insomniac? right. So, so insomniac is essentially a festival production company. It's become more of like a, a brand now, I guess, or like a big, big, big production company. Um, they produce the biggest dance festivals in the world. They also have a stake in rolling loud. I mm-hmm. think they're like, they're, they're like mutual partners or whatever. Um, and they do, they do a bunch of really, really crazy festivals. Right. Um, if you just even look up Insomniac festivals, like you've probably, if you're a festival goer, you've probably been to one of their festivals. Right. Um, so when they called me and as an avid festival goer, I, I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is amazing. Yeah. Right. Um, so I would, you know, is that, was that, you know, yeah, no, definitely. Hopefully. But, and as, as you're going about like getting into this festival world and shooting with artists right? and you're still working at Ninja Warrior, are you like trying, like during those casual conversations backstage, are you like, Hey, would you be interested in this doing Ninja Warrior? Did you ever, uh, did you ever pick any artists off? Like, no, to get you know, it was, it was funny. I, I, it's a good thought. It's a good, yeah. Good um, recruiting tool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thought, but yeah, I, I did not. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Maybe I should have. Right. <laughs> damn. Yeah. So, so how long does the, this, path of working three jobs and basically not sleeping while working at a place called insomniac right like how long does this go for like seven months okay um and then it got to the point it's like december it's like december of uh 20 i don't know 2014 or 15 or something um yeah around that span and i i had gone I like gone to Australia in May. Let's just call it 2015. Okay. I'd gone to Australia in May for my first Australia tour with these guys named Boombox Cartel. Okay. Um, their first Australia tour ever too, and uh, 
like right when that happened for some reason i think everyone in like dance music looked and said oh crap this guy's tour internationally you know like we should look we should look at him because like if someone took him on tour like and spent that kind of money you know maybe there's something there right right um so that like last six months of like 2015 i i uh i started getting a lot of lot of offers um a lot of really cool stuff too bigger artists whatever yeah. and i had gotten an offer to start 2017 all of january in australia or it might you know 2016 2016 in australia and so then I'm, i you know I, I have a decision to make now right because right? ninja warrior is not gonna let me take a month off there's yeah. no way yeah um insomniac was trying to hire me full-time as one of their editors and or i could you know go on tour for a month and, right you see what happens yeah. right so this this is the hardest decision i've ever had to make oh, in man. my life man you right. know and I, I still remember it to this day you know i remember calling my dad um and i was just like dude like like what do i do man like what like all all three have like you know pretty solid like paths that i could take like i could see like the three to five year plans for each path um i've already spent you know four years trying to develop my tv relationships right. you know leaving that you know it's kind of a risk yeah um or it can be insomniac um working you know, it's still a corporate company, but still a cool company. Um, or I could do this, which is like tour for a month, you know? Um, what, what, what ended up, what I ended up doing was taking, taking the month and, uh, taking the month in Australia. Cause yeah, I, I was just like, did. yeah, he, he's like, Joe, you just want to travel. Don't you? It's like, why don't you do this? Give this new freelance opportunity thing six months. Right. Like you have the money saved up now from your TV jobs. Yeah. Like just do it you know like if you leave like thankfully my tv relationships if if it didn't work out in six months like i could have gotten a job back in sure, tv sure but you know still a risk um so i went on tour with australia the first tour i did it was two separate tours it was um the first half was with this guy named party favor um which is the, my first gig at right. edc ever yeah, yeah um we'd stayed close so i oh, did cool. that and then the next tour was going on tour with flash drummers and nightmare and okay. they were doing a, a tour together um, and Flasher Thomas was like massive Super back huge. then. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so for me, that was like a huge opportunity. Yeah. Um, so I ended up doing that month and I remember I got to the Flasher Thomas tour and the first the first video we did, um, it went viral, like through, like, I think it was yes. like Facebook, right? And I'm like, and it was a raw clip. It wasn't even like an edited video. Yeah. It was just like a crazy moment that yeah. I ended up capturing. Um, you know, one day I think it got like 300 to 400 thousand views. Right. And, you know, then everyone, you know, my tag was there too, which is super important. Um, then everyone started hitting me up and it was like, yo, what's up? Like, this was dope. Like, and I, and I crushed, you know, I crushed the, the next, what I thought was crushing back right. then, the next, right, right, the next right. edited videos. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I finished that tour and I started making it work. You know, I started, I started hustling, reaching out to these managers. Um, and ultra that year, um, this guy, Will Runzel, who I tribute with like me, my beginning years, like essential to right. my beginning years. He's okay. a manager. And, uh, I remember I'm, I'm going to ultra. Manager for the festival? No, a manager for artists. Oh, okay. Word. Yeah. And so he runs a company called Prodigy Artists. It's like a, it's like big bass music, um, bass music artist management right. company. And so I had been doing work with him and how I would do some stuff every now and then that year was I would fly myself out to these festivals. I would book um, like five or six or seven artists at these like three day festivals and that would pay for my hotel and my flight back and some food money right, right, um, right. at the end. And that that's how I would like get myself out there. So I would make it look like I was like touring a little bit yeah. by doing this. Um, and working with a bunch of different artists because people want to hire the guy they already know if they're in like Milwaukee, for right. instance, right? They don't they don't know the Milwaukee shooter. They'd rather hire the guy from LA that's right. going to be there at the right, festival. Right. Um, so I would do that for for like I don't know. I did it. I did it. I don't know, like six or seven festivals a year Damn. Um, for that for that year, and uh, I would just really really make myself known and and really keep you know myself close to these guys. So the second they needed someone, they would think of you know your boy Joe. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, I did that, and then I remember I was at Ultra, um, which you know it's an hour away from my home. Um, so I so I would go down every year no matter what. Like sure. Ultra is my main festival, right? And I remember Saturday was going to be my day off. I was just gonna go party and let loose and enjoy my festival experience. And uh, I remember I got a call from this guy, Will, on, on Thursday. He's like, hey, I have this new guy named Nightmare. Like he doesn't have any, he doesn't have any, uh, you know, experience. He has no shows. He, but like, I believe in him. Like 
please do this for me. Like, I'll pay you your full rate. Uh, he's he's playing like a bunch of showcases on that Saturday. Make a video recap. We want it different. We want it really really cool. Can you please just do this for me, like right. as a favor? And of course, we'll pay you as you know, yeah, you, right. as we want you to. Um, and I was like, dude, I don't know, I don't know. But I was like, okay, like I will. Um, because you know, it takes sacrifice to get some, some yeah, sacrifice, whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. I won't party for the day I wanted to. Right. I'm gonna go shoot this video, yeah. which I still love doing. Um. So Friday comes along. I'm with this artist called Grand Theft, and he's playing Ultra on Saturday. But I'm at like one of his showcases on Friday, um, and he goes, "Hey, dude, like, you know, I really, I really love working with you. Can you come shoot Ultra for me tomorrow?" And uh, I had never shot Ultra before, and so I was. Uh, and this so, is on Friday. He's asking you to come on so Saturday. On Friday, Grand, like at like two a.m. Grand Theft is saying, "Hey, I'm playing at like five p.m. at Ultra right. on Saturday." Right. Um, can you help me out? And you're um, supposed to be shooting this I'm other supposed kid. supposed to be shooting Nightmare, no name, which, at the time. A, and not at Ultra. It's like at a club or not, something? Like showcase. Okay, dude. showcase. Like, like for like eight people. Right. Like, you know, he's a nobody yeah, at this yeah, time. Yeah. Um, and I go, oh, you know, shoot, man. Like, I don't know. Like, let me call Will and let me see what the actual schedule is. I call Will and he's like, bro, like, don't do this to me, man. Like, you can't, you can't, like, cancel. And I'm like, we're not canceling. I just want to see the schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, can I please try right. to bust ass? It's right. like, so five o'clock is the bigger artist. This right. guy is what time? All day. Oh yeah, shit. essentially. So because he wants like the like uh, the lifestyle the piece or whatever. Right, right. So I was like, all right, all right. I, you know, I tell Grand Theft he's like cool about it. Thankfully, he knows this last minute. And I go to shoot this guy Nightmare, and uh, you know we 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 vibe along, we get along really really well, and we we make like you know what i think is a cool video but with my skills at the time like looking back now it's not that cool of a video <laughs> you know but like we're growing together yeah, right yeah, yeah. and uh i remember that sunday comes along and skrillex played his so skrillex played like all like known known songs and then he he uh played one unreleased song and it happened to be a nightmare street track oh shit. and uh and will's genius do you have a tissue by chance actually probably Sorry. we can cut real quick yeah yeah what up creators i want to remind you about our community at jointhehomies.com the homies are the squad of legends who support what we do here at black window cream so we can continue to build this platform into the best educational space for content creators on earth <laughs> And in return for that support, we give you a bunch of sick perks all month long, like access to our live stream tutorials and hangouts, bonus podcast episodes, and so much more. Check us out at jointhehomies.com. Let's go. Okay, so Skrillex is going to play an unreleased song. Right, which we didn't know about. Okay. He, he even didn't know about. You so he played Will's all, genius. yeah, he played all, all released songs. And the one song that was unreleased happened to be this song called Nightmare. It was called Street, and it was by Nightmare. Right. And uh, Will Will's genius was that he marketed it like a pro, and he made everyone know that this was you know a nightmare track, and so all the blogs started blowing up because I guess it was like such a big deal that like there was only one unreleased song in the, in his set, and uh, nightmare blew up from there, man. Like he he started touring a ton, and you know with within a year or two he was one of the biggest names in bass um, music, right? Damn. So what ended up happening was you know I I was with him from the start, and so I started touring with him. And, um, yeah, me, me, his name is Tyler, me, me and Tyler nightmare, are like still good friends to this day. You know, we live like he lives up the hill. We live like a 10 minute walk from each other. Right, right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I toured with him a lot and, and when I was touring with him, I started, you know, again, what happened is that everyone's looking and going, okay, cool. Joe's touring now, but he's actually like touring as a videographer. Right. Like it's not one offs, not every other weekend. He's every weekend he's doing something. Right. Yeah. So then everyone was trying to, like, you know, come to me and, uh, bass music had really started blowing up, um, in, in the scene. Sure. And so I had known, I mean, I, you know, I, I've been going to all these shows every weekend shooting, but also hanging and networking with these guys and everyone started blowing up and so then i started working with a bunch of acts that were hot yeah you know? right and so what had, what ended up happening is that people would see my videos because they wanted to see everyone's really cool about tagging right and so they would tag me in a bunch of stuff and then slowly people would be like okay cool joe's like the bass guy I right mean, i don't know that that's i'm labeling myself sure, that. i don't sure. know if it is but yeah you're in it uh, but yeah i'm in it i'm doing it right um, and i'm making money you know i'm like i can like support myself on this like freelance video lifestyle which i thought was awesome that's so dope was the dude that the the dude that you originally had come with you to the first show that was like shooting you were kind james. of producing yeah james yeah, yeah. was he in this space at all or what was uh, he doing no 
No, he you know he he was doing like music video stuff. That's what okay, he wants right. to do, and that's right. you know that's what he does. Right. Um. And so he he wanted to do that stuff. Like total, total right. respect. Like, dude, yeah. go for it. You that's know? dope, though. What a what a right. connect like to be able to build it from that right. and just wing it. Like. Yeah, he's stoked too because you know we'll go to shows together and you know yeah. I'll get him in the stuff and it'll be awesome. Right. Um. And yeah, so so I'm starting I'm starting to tour. You know, I'm start I'm starting to do do well. I'm starting I'm also growing my skills, sure. which is really really important. Um no matter what we're all we're all always growing yeah you know? absolutely yeah i mean um, you're gonna keep shooting and keep editing you're gonna try to keep learning your shit like it's right. inevitable and yeah, when you say totally. touring because you mentioned weekends like you're busy every week so uh, yeah so tour edm tour artists really music. only target weekend shows right or so do they do a, a, yeah a lot of the times it's like three day three day shows um oh you know friday saturday sunday or thursday friday saturday fly in fly out shows we're okay. not on a bus right um i didn't do my first bus until like two and a half years into like sure. touring I guess. right um so yeah so that that's basically what i was doing and then like during during the days i was kind of just like doing photo shoots and stuff to like help supplement my income a little right, bit right. or like editing videos mm. um and so you know I, I i did that and i kept on working 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 with nightmare this whole time with a bunch of different artists okay this time. so everyone's just starting to right use you for so so i i had never been i never wanted to be the guy that um, is labeled as like, I guess until now, but like labeled as like nightmares guy or like, right. like I don't know, party favorites guy or but my cartel. Why guy. was that? Um, I, I feel, I feel like with that, like I, for me, for me personally, yeah. I would get locked into a too certain of a style and I wouldn't grow anymore. Mm -hmm. And if I was working with a bunch of different artists with a bunch of different creatives and I can really kind of like round out or yeah. like round out my skill set. Sure. That's dope. And, um, also, you know, I, I got to go to the cool places like three to four times. Right. So like, th dude, there was a time span like for like two years straight that I was going to Australia like six times a year or wow. not six times a year, but like, you know, like four times a yeah. year. Um, now I, I've been to Australia for tours 10 times. That's fucking insane. Yeah. It's though. dope. I it's love, so I'm sick. so blessed. Right. You know, I'm, I'm so thankful that I've been able to do it, but I've only been able to do that uh, because I've worked with different artists and you know, it's funny. I got labeled the Australia guy at one point. And so everyone's hitting me <laughs> up to go to Australia because I knew it, you know, yeah. like all these guys were blowing up and doing their first tours and they know I had been there, you know, for three separate that's tours. That's so like, interesting that that's the, that's how that works. Like right. the fact that you've been there before makes you like experience in that country to shoot. But right. it's not, at the Which, same time, it's like, it's the festival. Australia festival. is another America. Yeah. Dude. Like it's, it's, but also like, what is it about it that makes you think like, Oh, he knows how to like, he knows how to shoot around kangaroos or some shit. Like. Right. I think it's the creative places that I know that I've been to and I know where to go. I think that was like really important. Um, cause in the it, sense of like the artists, like, um, like to explore and shit. Like, well, I know, I know like cool hikes we can go on. Right. Where, like if you're going to the first time, you probably wouldn't know what to do. And yeah. I also know like homies in Australia right. where like I could hit up and they could take me to cool spots. So like, we're not stuck for an off day in our hotel room, like doing like a brochure, like, yeah tour right. you know what i mean um so i think that played a really big part and also you know i was gonna get into it later but like also with me i i like being homies with everyone and i i, I feel like i'm like very relatable to a bunch of people right and you know the kind of tour thing where i was like saying with tour you don't want to be a weirdo yeah thanks. um a lot of people can like i feel like it's it's really easy for a lot of people to like chill with me you know, I, I can hang yeah you right, know, in a right. sense like let's go do something tonight and you don't have to bring the camera and we'll just right and let's, let's just go fuck around yeah, and, yeah. you know go you know top go golf do whatever shit. <laughs> right, right yeah top golf <laughs> yeah um but uh but yeah so so a lot of people i guess like knew like knew i wouldn't be an issue on tour mm. And, uh, but I'm also very reliable where I, you know, right. your photos will be there the next day, your raws, you know, your edited videos, like I'm going to hit deadlines for yeah, you, right. you know? So I'm the best of both worlds. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know. People started, started hitting me up, hitting me up, hitting me up. Um, and I, you know, it's funny. He's bringing up Yoder. Um, Yoder. I remember seeing the carnage like videos crushed back in the him. day. Crushed him. Yeah. And I was like, damn, how am I going to be this good? Like, cause like, <laughs> this is when I'm coming up. Right. Yeah. But Yoder's on his bus tour already with carnage. Right. Um, and I'm just like, damn, like I remember sending this to like James, uh, that guy that helped teach me. And I was yeah. like, I was like, dude, like, like how the like, fuck do I do yeah, this? What, what do we do? What do we do now? Cause like, you know, now there's like a top level, you know, like I'm not saying I was top level then cause I definitely wasn't, but like there's people that are better now and everyone's seen the Yoder videos. I'm like, how am I going to like compete with that for mm -hmm. my artists? Right. Um, 
but then I realized, you know, you just got to work on your skill set. You know, some people yeah. just have it. You know, Yoder to this day is a, is a god. You right, know? the guy kills. I bet, I bet he's such a like. I remember you know studying all these different artists and like coming from the hip hop world and shit, not right. knowing much about EDM. Like he was my break into it and Carnage, recognizing him from like having worked with like a bunch of rappers. It's like sure. oh cool. And then you watch these the way he would create these recaps. I studied the fuck out of that shit. Like the, I right. pay homage to him all the time because I'm like I would watch those recaps. There's so many other recaps I would study while living in Iowa trying to be like what would I do if I could get in there and work with these artists totally you know what I mean and then try to find I for sure stole his fucking uh put slow pushing of a random person in the crowd that's not oh, going I mean, to I'm like, you motherfucker that's the illest shit I've ever seen <laughs> and I'm like I for sure saw it and I'm like yo that's that's a Yoda shot that that shit will that's I don't know there's just something about the way he would piece together even his font man like I took his font it's like it's D-I-N condensed or <laughs> new, you know just what I mean like gave it up real yeah, quick <laughs> right yeah oh sorry yeah yeah sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry no, 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 the font's fire and, and also like the ability like on the carnage tour just to go back to that because i feel like that's a pinnacle moment in his right. career but it's like you see the way he tells the story uh, on the road and there's characters and he really brings them to life right. and there's a way to capture that and there's an art to that it's not just like you just point the camera and edit it and it makes sense you know what he did is he brought the art of storytelling to recap videos yeah. which i love that yeah I, oh it's the best and yeah. especially you know me coming from tv like we're, we're telling stories all the time and mm -hmm. like that's what i always tried to do but he just did it better you know it was just so good um and to this day even like with short the short form stuff we do now like i still try to like get across something so that you right. like you know understand or like feel something or like know where i'm going of in course. a sense you know but um but yeah you know he was killing it yeah he was killing it um but yeah so i was i was touring and i was uh i was doing these like one-offs and then i got my first bus tour with this guy called what's so not okay um have you ever heard of flume yeah flume cool so flume used to be in what's so not oh, um, they had recently broke up and what's so not was doing his own like solo tour right um so i, I hop on this bus tour this guy, Jahan, uh, who works at this company called Benchmob, he does their digital. He did What's On Not's digital back then. Um, and we kind of like, I started doing recaps, you know, weekly recaps on my, my first bus. Right. Um, did really well and uh, was just creating really, really cool content for them. And uh, Jahan comes in later in this story, so that's why I right, wanted sure. to blast him out now. Um, and so, you know, I torn, 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 torn. Years go by. I'm working with bigger artists. Um, I'm still taking in touch with everyone. And, uh, this guy Winter Halter, who's my business partner now, um, we meet. We're, we met throughout these years, and we stayed in touch, right? Right. And so we became very, very close friends. And there's one day, like, where me and him were just having like a phone call, just kind of chatting and catching up. And he's like, "Dude, like, you know, I feel like I feel like everyone has gotten a way to like organize dance music in a way, and like I feel like with creative and content, it's the wild, wild west." Mm. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. And he goes, so why why aren't we creating the way of like organizing how you know creatives are found or, or how creatives are like how how we create? Like, why aren't we like like trying to tame? I'm, I'm making this up, but like trying to tame the wild wild west. Right. You know? Like, how how do we create structure so that we're not so so freelance? If we leave an artist, we you know we have to hit up people or they have to reach out. Right. Let's create that structure. Hmm. Um. So this like. It's like two years ago, um, 2017, I, was, I guess two, three, two. Sure, yeah, right, yeah, now it's 2020. Right. How's that work? I don't right. Know. right. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so I was like, yeah, I mean, dude, you're totally right. Um, fast forward to a year of us like talking about it. Um, we start this company. Um, we, we, we had like started doing like a little bit of it, but we hadn't really like, like gone into it like right. full like we had. And um, we, so it was, it was originally called like this stupid name called Chameleon. Okay. Um, that was our company name. Right. And uh, we had put people on some tours and that was the extent of it. You know, we just put people on tours, helping them out. And then me and Yoder were in Chicago one night and he had kind of, you know, we had always been like friends, um, but we really got into it one night. You know, we were, we were at this uh, this club um, with Carnage actually. But uh, yeah, so I was talking with Yoder. I was like, yo, this is what we're doing. Um, just kind of, you know, he's asking what's up. So I'm right. like, hey, this is what we're doing. Like, this is our plan kind of, um, you know, I, you know, we're just trying to, we're just trying to change the way like content is like, I guess managed in a sense. Sure. I, I don't really know how to say it. Or bought, like, or bought, you know I mean? yeah. They're really like trying, because you become a trusted source. Like you guys right. are, are being vets, you know what I mean? At that point. Exactly. So we've been doing this for years, yeah. man. We know everyone at, right. at this point. 
Um, and Yoder's like, yeah, dude, that's like a really good idea, actually. Um, fast forward a couple weeks and he shoots me a call and he's like, yo, like, I can't, I can't stop thinking about like, you know, what, what you guys are creating. Like, I really want to be a part of this. Um, and so, you know, I, it's so funny cause like, just for me, it comes so full circle that like, you know, I was watching Yoder's videos being like, how am I going to get this good? And you know, now, you know, I work, you know, next to him, which right. is so great. Um, but you know, back to that, he's like, yo, I really want to be a part of this. And you know, I, I talked with James and I was like, you know, me and James were both were like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. You know, um, you know, bringing in partners is always tough. Right. Um, just because of percentages and you know what they can bring to the table but you know yoder yoder was bringing in a lot to the table right. um, so you know of course we were super super excited to have him on um and you know right right when we got him on we got to work we uh we started a new llc um because chameleon was literally doing stuff um so we started curza we named it curza how'd you come up with um, that name yeah so curza doesn't really have like a it's not defined and that's what we really liked and also there's not many five letter words left right that like kind of flow right, right? um and that's honestly the extent well, of like, i could easily like think you guys maybe an edm act yeah i mean maybe you know you know what's funny is <laughs> like, you have content of performances and if i'm me and don't know what that motherfucker looks like on stage right. and that's whoever i'm like oh yeah they're fucking lit like they got crazy content <laughs> it's crazy yeah you know it's, it's honestly yeah you know you never know but uh there's actually like someone with a similar name that i think is like just starting to come up really with, like, i think it's like k-u-s-a or something or like k-u-r like z-a that's crazy or s k-u-r-s-a y'all should collab for sure yeah i mean maybe Damn, we'll see right let's see if you try to send us a cease and desist right good luck yeah motherfucker we've okay. been doing this yeah yeah <laughs> but you guys when you guys come together um you start the company um and is it like you guys literally just taking like a cut to get an artist connected to a creator i mean in a sense is that how your business model you know be? people ask that all the time and like i i feel like we're doing more than just taking a cut like i i for me you know, we, we had always recommended people, right. you know, we're, we had gotten so busy. The three of us had gotten so, so busy before Curza that we would always just like as homies recommend, yeah, you know, our, our guys right. just, you know, let, let everyone yeah. eat, you know? Um, but then it got to a point where we wanted to make sure we want, like with Curza, we want our content to be high quality. Like we're, we're by no means like the cheap production guys that right. will take gigs, you know, yeah. we are, we are going to guarantee you some hot, like dope shit. Right. You know, like you're going to get some really, really great content. Um, but you know, it comes, it comes with a premium. Yeah, of course. And the premium is also me, Yoder, Winterhalter will, depending on the client, will personally oversee all content and help our creators get Dial by it. and, you know, make sure it's like, like we get the V1 before they get the V1. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Yeah. And uh, we'll also, you know, help them out with coloring. We'll give them tips on like business growth. Um, you know, we have people, we have people that are on payroll, but we also have people that like we contract out. Sure. And, uh, we, we want everyone to win, man. Like yeah. we're not, we're not here to like, like smuggle your career and like, you know, make you everything yeah. Curza. Right. We want, we want you to be successful. You know what right. I mean, man? Like, um, so we will give them personal experience, like tips, um, and like, just like kind of give them shortcuts. You know, I, th I think with us, and you know we work with a lot of younger creatives who are like 22 now you know and they're killing it mm -hmm. um and i feel like we're get, kind of giving them a three-year shortcut to of course right are. yes yeah to the shit that like we had to experience and like the bs money that we had to do like like i remember we, we just placed a kid with like a really really high profile artist and uh you know before that he was working with like c-list c-list djs like right. probably making like 300 bucks a show you know like and like that's okay if you're making 300 like yeah like, it's okay like yeah. you, we're all building but right. like i'm giving you that shortcut man you know and like i feel like that's where you know us us taking a percentage well that that's where it's like beneficial for you man like yeah you like, don't gotta explain it to me i think about that all the time where it's like i get hit up left and right especially sure. with black and cream being like an education space but sure. then people are like but there's creators in there and they all fucking work like i need right. that so when you look at it it's like all right as you put on as many homies as possible you do it after a while it's exhausting to like be a middleman all the time and then then i'm like that's also a business play there because it's like yeah totally. you did all the work you did all of the previous work to build relationships to guarantee quality to build trust to do all these things where maybe a newer art i'll, I'll call a creator an artist but it's like they're sure. coming into the game they may be dope but at the same time it's like they haven't they didn't put in years of experience in traveling to australia fucking 11 times on the 17 hour flights and doing all this shit and totally. learning who the locals are that can take you to a dope ass fucking waterfall with the, this this right. and that or whatever the homie's got a monkey and shit and that's good content it's like that's <laughs> a lot of 
work to do you know what i mean right. so for someone to go into it and, and look at because i always think that's the funniest part like anytime i've ever been like oh yeah i'll just take a cut of this i always feel guilty like out the gate of like right. why did As I, take I did it? too you know what i mean so i could understand it being strange to try to develop something around that but what you're saying makes total sense and is completely valid and for people who would ever go against that method of like building relationships and, and selling content it's like that's how this shit works. You know what I mean? Like in any other industry in the world, that's how that shit works, absolutely. man. Like you look at, you look at lawyers, for instance, and you have a lawyer that works at a law firm and you, like, let's say, let's say a lawyer is making 500 bucks an hour, man. Right. And, uh, the law firm is giving their lawyer 500 bucks an hour. You think that client's paying the law, the, the firm 500 bucks an hour? No, they're no, paying them like, like 1500 to $2,000 yeah, exactly, an hour. Right. right. Man. It like, is probably they're taking a huge money. cut. Right. Yeah. So it's like, Every every company every company outside of entertainment, you know, it, including entertainment, they all do that. Yeah, you know, of we're just bringing that, I guess, like that, like I guess, plan into entertainment yeah. in a sense. But we're also like not just taking, you know, like of course, so, no, some no, some no, people no. some people like won't want help, and they'll just be like, "Hey, dude, like I actually got it, thank you," and we'll let them fly. Like that's cool with right. us, you know. But we're always there to help you and have your back. Yeah, like, I love that. Negotiations, business, taxes, stuff like that. Like, like we have an insurance plan for our guys. Like, exactly. Not, not like health insurance, but like equipment yeah. insurance and stuff. Like production like, insurance. You're good, bro. Like, yeah, you're good. We got you. Right. Um, and then we'll also, you know, if we need to tell a client, hey, it's not working out with the artist, you know, which is, or with the, with our creator, which is sometimes a tough conversation for the creator to have. Yeah. We'll do that for you. Right. You know, like I just had to tell a really, really like high profile, like YouTuber, like, hey, we're not work, we're not doing this um, on behalf of one of my guys, which, you know, would, it was an awkward conversation for the creator to have himself. That's why it hit me up. Right. And uh, to do what? Not to do the project or something? Yeah. I mean, they, they just weren't like, like, I, they weren't organized and it was a really it was going to be a weird weird like situation if he like had agreed to the terms right, right? um and so he texted me after and he was like dude like thank you like i really appreciate it like this is the stuff that like you know i i feel like i'm getting you know my like i guess like my use yeah of course or whatever um but also we don't want people to feel like um they have to stay with curza the entire time mm -hmm. you know like we, we have specific artists um that work with Curza and then we place the creators with Curza. But right. like if our guys ever want to leave, like, you know, it suck and we don't want them to leave. But like if they want to go off with another artist they found not with Curza, you're free to do that. Yeah, like course. you totally can. Yeah. Um, and there's no harm, no foul. See, that's the, that's what, that's the beauty of what you guys are doing. Cause I, I've been in this shit with production companies and you always see this like weird hostile environment where right. it's like you leave and you're a trader and all this shit. Right. I, I think, I was always confused uh, early on. It's funny, like thinking of why production companies have fees, right? And you look at it from that standpoint, which falls in line with what you're doing. It's like you have to take a cut and there's reasons why. But when I was coming up, there's a lot of jobs where I do everything. I'm like, why did I not? Why did that cut go there? Right. But then, sure. then you don't understand. Like once you start doing and running your own production company, you start realizing all the work that goes into building it, the amount of time and energy that you've already put in. Obviously, it's stuff we've talked about. Right production insurance, things like this, all running books and dealing with bullshit that a lot of people don't have time to learn or understand that that's part of it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, totally. client relations is a whole job. Like, and some people don't want to do that. Some people just want to pick up the camera, do the job, submit it and be known for that. You know what I mean? And that's cool. That's totally cool. That's, cool. that's why we do this shit. That's, they're, they're creatives yeah. in like a, in like a whole like left field. Like they're all, I guess, all left or all left or, or right. all right, whatever. Right. Like they are just creative. Yeah. And we'll handle everything. Yeah, I love so that. No, nah, that's super dope that you guys started this and like. Thanks, so, so this started two years ago. Um, so we've been really, really pushing it for like a year. Okay, like with Yoder, well, like I would say it restarted with Yoder involved. That's right. when we like we're like, okay, cool. This is like super serious for us now. This is our next step out of mm. touring. That that we would say, you know, I mean, we've been touring for a while, and we still have. We each have like you know touring left a couple of years for sure, but uh, you know, eventually, uh, you know, I'm going to be 40 years old. I don't really want to follow a DJ around you right. know, taking photos and videos, yeah. right? Um, but I love this industry and I love entertainment and I love music. And with what we're doing, we're not only like placing, you know, people on, you know, artists. That's one facet of the business. We're right. also helping people with creative and developing brands and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and like we're, you know, we're a full service production company. We can do whatever you want. Right. Um, so, you know, we'll do music videos or we'll do festival after movies. Like I just got off uh, this like party cruise ship called Friendship. Um, this guy. Yeah, we were watching the clip. That used to be another name or something. Uh, so it was Holy Ship. Holy Ship. Um, and this guy, Gary Richards, created it. And then 
some, something happened where he he left that company and created his own another company. one right and uh gary is really really uh really close with winter halter my partner um because winter halter did his tour like years back and uh you know hit up curza to do it right. so i was available and so i went to go direct the after movie um the after movie is going to be a riot we uh we actually hired like this really really funny like comedian actor which i'll tell you off camera because i can't say yet but uh <laughs> but uh but yeah so it's going to be more skit based right um which i'm really really stoked on when's that drop no deadline yet oh okay yeah right. yeah he's he's really cool with us where he's like i we trust you we want you to make it right super um, tight yeah so like you know when we do decide to release it We'll, we'll be good um but yeah so we'll, we'll do festival after movies i think we did like like seven six or seven festival after movies last year right um and depending on who's available usually one of us will go out to direct it and then we'll have a whole you know production team with us yeah because that like first the first is, here's three things i need to talk about okay. one winter holter yes what a high is that his real name such a dope name james winter holter it's a hard-ass last name you were fuck very blessed my friend that's a <laughs> he's hard, a man it's like one of those names you're just like i was born with a stage name that's right uh, oh and he is a character is he he is he is an actual character yeah <laughs> okay just need to get that off uh two a girl leah seems do you leah know sems yeah sems sems um I was, I, i've been trying to get her on here but i remember her doing after or not, i don't know if it was the after movie but she would Deja do a lot Boom. of yeah, yeah a lot of dope shit like in that space but when you go to festivals and you guys go and take over someone's directing the content and, right. and, and the way this works, whenever you see like after movie, um, like the festival after movies, sure. that means that you guys are being commissioned to oversee all things that highlight this festival in the best way possible. And you're the eight, you're like the A team for the festival as far as like what content will come out underneath that belt. Right. Right. So when you go, cause when I, the more festivals I go to, you're seeing like squads pull up with like fucking uniforms almost like they're all wearing like them whoever com production company we, we have our cruiser film, film yeah. crew shirts yeah for so sure. i'm starting to notice that that's becoming something that festivals are buying into instead of just like hiring random creators to just like kind of cover different shit you know what i mean like right so i mean it's just a whole it's a whole like team effort kind of thing especially like if you think about it like with the music video sense you have your ad like keeping stuff flowing and keeping right. things organized yeah. if you just had a bunch of creators tell them to go like go create and they didn't talk to each other yeah they're they could all, all the get the same thing and, 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 yeah they have the, yeah they could all just get the main stage shots and not get the ferris wheel that right. you wanted or the girls you know with their hands up or whatever yeah um but yeah leah sam's actually has worked with curzon before oh dope yeah for uh this uh this guy bass nectar yeah it's one of our clients so yeah, yeah right um we did deja vu his festival and leah sam's went went dope. over yeah, yeah. winter Alter directed that one sick yeah. yeah so it's like so you guys will go to the festival how many is it depending on the size of the festival as how many creators you'll bring along? It's depending on the size. And honestly, if the festival wants the full, full crew and they're willing to pay for it, like, yeah, for you sure. Bring you know, we'll bring, I mean, if they want it. How many know? people is a full crew usually? It depends. You know, for, for Lost Lands, um, which is a big dubstep excision festival, we did that two years ago. We did it uh, three years and two years ago, but it was kind of, it wasn't really a Curza thing, but it was like they hired like the Curza right, you know, right. main guys yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, it was... Uh, I mean, that was like probably like 25 people depending on God damn. Well, it was photo and video too. Right, right, but right. But it's also like a massive festival and they really wanted the best content. Yeah. And if you look at the video from two years ago that, that, that James directed and edited, I, I like produced it for him. Like right. it's, it's nuts. And so she, Joe Gabe, like he's an excision, he's excisions producer. Sure. He like, he was like, I'd say he's like the main producer, but I was producing like our side of, of stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, it was it was nuts. I'll send you that after. Yeah, well, Maybe there see, be so like it, some sort of. Yeah, of yeah. course. Is it like so when you go as a director from you guys as a production company? What's the the conversation like between the festival and you guys? Is it them just trusting that they understand you guys fucking get it and you're gonna make it look fire and they'll just make sure you have access to everything and that's it? Or are they giving you a lot of like we really want this and we want this and we want this? And we yeah, want this. I mean, I mean, it really depends. Yeah, you know. Um, so I'll get out of Lost Lands because we didn't really have a conversation like like that. Right. Um, let's let's talk about like Ever After, which is something I directed. Okay, just to give you it's more context because yeah, yeah. right, I know. Right, right, you know? Right, right. Um, so they came in. Yo, they were they were friends with Yoder beforehand, and uh, Yoder connected us, of course, because you know we're business partners, right. or whatever. And uh, um, they were like, hey, you know, our our last guys, you know, we're good, but they didn't, they didn't really you know capture what we wanted them to capture, so here's what we're looking for. This is our video last year. Here's what we're looking for this year. And here's the points that maybe like they missed or they wanted us to like really, really capture. Right. Um, and so I'll go in, um, and this, we'll do this for every festival. We'll ask how many stages, the capacity, you know, the aesthetic, the look, like even like 
maybe like the colors that you want to see in it. Right. Um, branding is super important to a lot of these guys because of sponsorships. Are there any sponsorship activations that we need to need, need yeah. to uh, capture? Uh, do you need photo too? Do you need the whole team? Do you need short form content? Do you need editing each day, like an, a moments editor? Right. Um, that throughout the festival you can put stuff off on your social media. Um, there's there's a multitude of questions. Right. You know, it's it's kind of like a blanket email that we'll send. Um, but we want them to be super descript mm. because based off that, the creators in our Rolodex could change. Right. Um, if they want someone super super, you know, short form that will make really cool VFX guys, we have a guy for that that we will, you know, fly out for that specific reason. Right. Um, if they just want a festival after movie, it'll usually like for forever after. For instance, it was. Uh, two main stages and like a side stage, but they also had a camping, um, camping like installation too, cool. where people could camp. Right. Um, so I mean, it was a decent sized festival, no matter what. Um, and they they had carnival stuff. Um, it was me. It was two uh, red ops. It was a moments editor. Um, we had a specialty shooter. We had uh, the moments editor also doubled as a same day shooter. Right. Um, we had a drone guy. We did DIT and we had a PA. So I don't know, was that six or seven? Oh, yeah, something maybe. Like that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's a solid I should have squad. counted when I right. said it. But yeah. But yeah, so solid squad. Um, you know, we'll make sure we always have our own our own trailer. We need walkies. Um, right. we need access to go anywhere, of course. And uh, you know, we'll kind of come up with a game plan. Um, you know, I'll go uh, I'll I'll look at the set list and I'll look at the stages and the mapping and I'll say, Cool, this is where you guys should be at certain points, or this is the vision that I have. I'd really love for you know, you to capture in your style and then and then uh you know the other shooter to capture in their style and uh we'd also need general coverage of, of the event you right. know we we a lot of our festivals are really cool they're like you don't need to get every single dj uh, we just need like overall like coverage we're mm -hmm. like you know if we want for marketing or promotional use and stuff like that um so yeah you know we'll go out and you know we have a whole game plan each day and i'll look at the selects usually every, you know every night making sure that everyone's getting you know we got the shots we needed right and uh yeah that's we'll fucking go out and I think that it, it happen. after talking to Danilo and like learning the festival circuit and right. understanding the whole there's a whole nother play to it because every time I've ever gone to festivals it's with artists so right. I don't I didn't really ever pay attention to it I know that there's always photographers and there's like Greg Noir I don't know if you know Greg I mean well, God like, like photographer legend. yeah, yeah. crazy but like paying attention to people like them they're like going around hitting all these festivals and it's like oh that's pretty dope that these festivals will fuck with someone individually and bring them out then you learn there's a whole <laughs> method to it totally. you know what I mean yeah. um, and you know Baith uh, we just Beth? had uh, we just went to Saddle Ranch like, like really? four days ago with like a group of people yeah Shout out Saddle Ranch that yeah, yeah. I used to live like literally right next door there and their nachos bro got me there like three times a week really no problem. that's funny it was, yeah I don't, it was like a random it was like this Tuesday or like like this week Tuesday and we we had a random just like rager of a night like <laughs> everyone just got like lit it was so funny um, but yeah it was good to like it was a bunch of content guys so it was yeah. really good to like hang out with a bunch of the content crew right. Danilo was there yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah we just had a blast that's fun yeah, yeah. so she she got us hooked in we, we started like a, or we're like in the middle of creating a series called In the Field so we like cool. go in the field with different creators oh and like, sick um, and so we're trying to rack up like a season and we went with uh, Rolling Loud she wasn't actually there Beth wasn't there but she looped us in with everybody Right. So we went and documented what it was like to be a crew, you know, of that magnitude and like showcase awesome. how the workflow and because it's very complex. And I think for a lot of creative listening, especially young ones, I would potentially be someone you'd hire in the future. Right. Like understanding what goes into it versus like, I think a lot of people kind of look at like, I'm the shit and that's why they want me there. And when I'm there, I'm going to be with all these artists, all, all the main ones that I like. And a lot of times it's sacrifice. Like you might not get to go with these artists or they may put you over here sure. and you have to, you're really good at covering it like this. Yeah. Um, but I think it's super important for people to understand like the backside of how this goes so they could kind of earn to be a part of that and find a way to fit in a crew, you know? So like right. for when you're looking to vet in new creatives, maybe they're not on, even on your Rolodex or I'm sure you guys get hit up all the time. Oh yeah, all the time. I'm sure you, yeah, yeah. so how, how do you guys kind of go about, especially with new people that you may not have been recommended by a homie or whatever, like how do you guys kind of decide who you fuck with? Right, yeah, so we, we have a whole database of 
basically every shooter that's ever hit us up yeah um, we ask them to submit like 20 photos and three of their favorite recap videos that they do both mm. and uh you know we'll vet them we'll see what we'll see you know what's up i don't know i don't know if i should give away all our secrets yeah, but, yeah, uh, but, uh, but uh but yeah you know we have we have a database and you know we'll ask them to you know submit to the database essentially um you know we want to know about them right you know, more than that too so you know depending on who it is or you know if we're off tour we'll have phone calls with them and you know kind of get a a feel for their personality and stuff sure. like that and uh yeah you know we want to give opportunities to people that are like ready for it right you know but we also want people to grow and not get like jumped into it mm -hmm. um you I know like, that. I, yeah i i consider curzo like a very like top tier like kind of thing like i really really want to keep the brand like super close and yeah. keep it like super super high quality um so so yeah you know i i want i want people to like grow and when they're ready we'll we'll put them into the shit mm -hmm. you know we'll we'll uh we'll get them going right um and yeah that's you know, super cool I just, I just want them to to shine yeah exactly yeah. right that's a you're a good guy you know Thanks, you're a good guy for that yeah um uh, talk about Diplo. So yes. be, being someone who didn't want to be someone's guy. Right. I was off tour this like beginning of this year. Really? Or 2019. So you were, you weren't, you were just really focusing on the business. I was taking one offs and I was really just trying to help Curza grow. Right. So what switch for you to be able to like, ah, shit, All right, I'm going to go ride around with Diplo. Totally. For um, so Jahan, so the what's a not bus tour who I'd worked with, yeah. you know, back then. Yeah. yeah. Jahan had seen what we were doing because he follows me on Instagram. Right. Um, and Jahan does Diplo's digital with a bunch of different people. Um, he owns a company called Bench Mob. He's like a digital digital company. Right. The man. Um, so he hits me up uh, via email. I just I actually this is like two weeks before Coachella. Okay. And uh, I actually had gotten canceled on that day for a Coachella gig. Um, they said that you know they just didn't need me anymore. I was right. like, fuck, dude. Like that, that kind of sucks. Yeah. Know? And. Um, he hits me up and he goes, Hey, you know, Diplo needs a full time photo video guy. Um, it needs to start at Coachella. Um, <laughs> and I was like, well, well shit, dude, like I'll be there. Yeah. I, no, I, I'm not going to be there. Oh anymore. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. But I'm, I, I call him and I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like two weeks, like you giving me two weeks to play someone like dope full, full time for Diplo, which I can, you know, he's top tiers as, as yeah, it gets for dance music and, and even pop, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so he's like yeah you know i know and so i sent him that that email I was like you know personality yada 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 what do we need and um you know we, we got it back and i was just kind of like dude two weeks is two weeks is in my head and to the partners i'm like two weeks is tough man like i i, I can't play someone that we trust because most of our guys are already on tour like right. they already have dates man yeah, like, yeah. like for months yeah so um so i was like i called your back and i was like listen dude um, let me go. Let me guarantee you some good content. You know how I work. You know my personality. Let me go for like it's like the three weeks. Um, so it's it's two stage coaches or two two Coachellas and then one stage coach, which right. is the third week. Right. Um, it's all on the same Coachella grounds. Yeah, yeah. And so he was like, "All right, cool. Like we'll do that." And uh, in my in my mind, I'm like, "Cool. I'm gonna get themselves. I'm gonna get them invested into Curza." And then from there, I'm going to play somebody once they trust, you know, what we can do and what we do. Right. Um, what ended up happening is me and Diplo got along really, really well. And, um, yeah, we, we just, I, we just it kept just on, working. we just kept on going. Right. Yeah, it worked. So we were just like, all right, let's do that. Um, I had kind of gotten like a solid foundation on my side down for like what I need to do to help keep Kurza going. Right. And, um, so yeah, I just ran with it, but you know, it's funny it's funny. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about, you know, my first week with, uh, with Diplo. Yeah. Um, so we do, we do, you know, Diplo's life. We already talked about it. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. We're doing stuff at all times. Yeah. And that includes into the wee hours in the morning, into the actual, you know, depending on what it is, he, he just loves DJing. Yeah. He'll go into like, we don't like, like, we'll you know, we'll party sometimes, but like, we don't do drugs. Like we don't do any, you know, we, we, he just likes to DJ. Yeah, right. So we'll go to parties to DJ. Right. And, uh, I remember, Every, every single time he was playing Sahara stage, which is like the EDM stage, yeah. I guess. And uh, so he took me there quite a we, He tried to oh, take yeah? me there at least. He's like, dude, we gotta go to this one. I promise. When I go to Coachella, it's always been with artists and I never right. leave fucking artist compound. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't yeah. do shit. I'm just like, uh, yeah, let's go see the three artists. But that shit in there is crazy. Nuts. Crazy. Nuts. People are popping off, like having fun. Oh, uh, man. It's a vibe yeah. for sure. So so we're uh, we're walking around, even artist compound. Like I've gotten tight with people outside of dance music, of course, you know, working everywhere. Right. And uh, 
people and again my personality i i relate to a lot of people and i'm friend i, I want to be friends with everyone yeah. i love people right and so everyone's coming up to me dapping me up um and i'm sure like you know uh 20% of them wouldn't have come up if they didn't like see I was with Diplo but right. like you know everyone's coming up and dapping me up what's up Joe how are you man like yo so stoked for the weekend whatever and um, you know Wes has seen that Diplo's Wes uh, Wes has seen this and he's like and even Luke the tour manager and Eli and they're like like this there this is I've known Luke for a little bit through Vegas uh, Vegas residencies but Eli and Wes um, I met Wes a couple times. He doesn't remember me. Eli doesn't know who I am. Right. Um, so That's they're just sick. seeing a guy and they're seeing a photographer. Everyone's coming up to the photographer saying what up. And right. no one's really saying hi to Wes. <laughs> so everyone's like, everyone's like, who is this kid? You know what I mean? Like, like what the fuck's going on? And, uh, you know, again, that 10 or 20% just wanted to say what up to me. So Wes could see them, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. which I'm cool with, right. like whatever. Yeah, please. And, um, so they would make comments here or there, like, you know, next day they would be like, oh, like, who's Joe going to see this time or whatever. <laughs> and uh, I think the the uh, the climax of, of that was we uh, we had finished Coachella. We had gone to a party and we wanted to go to another party. Um, it was called, I don't remember the name of it, but it was, there was like Virgil Abloh was playing, yeah. um, you know, off-white guy. Yeah, He's right. a DJ, DJ. If you don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. I, he, six sets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, He's a genius. Yeah, so sick. And, um, so we're not on the list though and uh you're like you are but diplo's not and you're like sorry guys joe made it well i'm gonna get to that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh but yeah so we're not we're not on we're not on the guest list so um you know the guest list line is also packed so we're like all right cool let's go to the table service line where there's no one there and we'll just people see wes's face because right. everyone everyone knows yeah, yeah. the west you yeah, know yeah. west so yeah. um so we're going and as we're walking to the table service line it's like super dark out there's not really light someone comes up and gives me a huge hug in front of everyone and she's like joe it's so <laughs> shout out shy you made me look super good um but uh joe how are you oh my god it's so good seeing you i haven't seen you in a couple of months yada yada okay you plus how many how many do you need she brings out the bracelets wow and then, yeah, and then I hear Wes in the background go, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> he goes, "He goes, Eli, you're fucking fired. I don't even need you anymore." And uh, you know, I knew I was in there. Yeah, he's like, "I um, got Joe, man. Joe right, was getting us into right. anything." And it was just such like a that was, was a perfect like, time. Yeah, such bro. a like I wouldn't like flex, I guess, like being like you know, like I, I, not even flex, but like it was a fun story. Yeah, funny story. That's called being nice and and getting to know people, man. Right. That's how that shit works. Yeah, totally. What and, a uh, funny ass timing. Yeah, so like perfect timing just because that was the inside joke the entire yeah. time with me you know oh my god and so that happens you know we're getting along great next weekend goes by we get along great and then uh i'll tell you another funny story that i think your viewers would also like Please do. um little naz's first performance ever was uh at stagecoach during the diplo set this oh was, shit yeah, really yeah so so that was it was like that the one with the so then is this your video like where where everyone's going off to old town road and yeah probably it's just like pretty acapella basically where they're just like killing yeah it. yeah yeah it's my video damn probably that's crazy. yeah um so that so i remember when they told me i was like oh shit this is awesome you know it's gonna be so sick and jahan we created kind of like a game plan of you know what shots we needed so we could send to all the press agencies the next morning i didn't sleep that night obviously i right. was editing all all day until we you know hours in the morning um and so yeah they tell me you know little nas we're, we're on like this like the artist compound but they like kind of close this off because it's a huge secret yeah you know little nas is there billy ray's there um his wife noah <laughs> cyrus so is there yeah all, all you know really really just great people yeah. just all there and uh sorry i gotta hey you're good you're good yo it's allergy season out here it's man allergy season fucking yeah. i just got done with it so yeah it's it nuts sucks. um so so yeah so you know we're all there and we're just we're just talking you know i don't know i just thought it was just such like a fun interesting that was like my one of my highlights of my career just being able to be that that was the epitome of pop culture back in may mm. like it was old town road that's it yeah like horses in the back was the most inside yeah. like common joke everyone would say you know at the time so um i think with diplo it's really cool because we're we're like so into like pop we're, we're immersed into this pop culture scene and we're yeah. like i feel like i i'm always trying to be like like sh like bring the vi virality and like viral videos or viral photos right. out of like everything we do right um so yeah just being like there that was cool i mean you even saw the video yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. and um 
And so, yeah, I mean, also, you know, we, we hadn't talked about this before, but I feel like it'd be cool to touch on like, like making photos viral or like viral, like posts. Or well, yeah. Whatever. Cause you're like, just saying like, we wanted to make sure we got it out to all the agencies. I'm like, who's doing that? Like right. whose role is that to like fish content to, I would say Jahan, okay. Jahan and, and management. Right. Um, you know, so that when you wake up the photos out there and yeah. thankfully being, you know, being so close, being the photographer for that performance, yeah. it was me, the right. videographer or whatever, yeah, of course. whatever you want to call me. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, it was that. Um, and so yeah, that, that was like, that was my most, I think proud moment probably in my career. Well, what would you say is the art to getting the viral? I mean, obviously the re like the interaction is, what's viral like right. people like i like uh we're at rolling loud and like we're all backstage and um someone just like got in a fight with who was it it was like it was like um nipsey's security guard got in a fight with some other dude and it was like over some shit and who oh yeah it was like someone someone from, i don't remember who it was but they get in us fight right and we see all this shit go crazy and everyone right. was like, oh shit and then the next day there's just like one cell phone and i remember seeing this person getting this like clip you know what i mean like filming this and i'm like this is a bad idea like right, right where we're at and who's back here and these fucking dudes are going at it like you filming this shit is not good for right. you well, you'll, if you're a photographer you're never gonna have a job again yeah you, you know, know like, what to like film and what not to film i get yeah. it documentary shit is like sure. if you're with the artist you're, sometimes sure. you gotta Roll make it. the decision but goddamn, like in this shit was like what's happening i want to film and you're like no you don't want to film these motherfuckers right. fighting. like and then that shit was out the next day i'm like wow that's crazy so it's like someone was able to capture this moment and people just hear of shit and they turn it into stories but like when you're looking at it from a perspective perspective of like this is diplo uh the cyrus like everyone's it's a here. pop culture moment yes how do you know how to handle that and like you guys planned your shot list like you see it coming kind of in advance so you guys were able to like pre prepare i guess right yeah and you know what i also like assert myself in these situations mm -hmm. like uh, i know when to be the, the the fly on the wall photographer like if if he's in the studio with a with a high profile like musician like I know like sometimes they they just need to work and yeah. I'm not like I'm not like, like the yo, homie. look at me real quick. Right, right, okay. Yeah, right, right. I'm like, hey guys, like can we okay, yeah. can we do one more position? Yeah. Like yeah. I'm not that guy. Right, right, right. But you know, if we're there and, and we're all hanging out together and like, you know, I, I always try to be like one of one of the homies or like one of the friends and uh you know, people become comfortable with me then, sure. and then they let loose a little bit. And uh, I also, Diplo has complete trust in me mm -hmm. that I'm not gonna take a stupid photo and post it on my Instagram saying, hey, this is so funny, like whatever. Right. Like, not that he does anything bad, you know, right. it's just like if, if there's any, you know, situations that we don't want to be seen, it's not, sure. you know, I'm not I'm never gonna do yeah, it. Of course. And including all my artists, right. you know? Um, so I think with that, you know, I, like I had talked to, to Naz beforehand and I'm sure he doesn't even remember this conversation cause it was so quick, but I was, I was like, Hey man, just so you know, like I want you to, cause it was his first ever performance. I was like, I want you to be as comfortable as possible. So I just want you to do everything. If you happen to see me and you see me with the camera rolling, like play with it a little bit if you want to, right. but that's totally up that to you. Great, just do your thing. Direction. Just do your thing. Right. Um, you know, with, with something like, with someone like Billy Ray, you know, like he, he, he already knows what to do, man. He's like, like, he like kicked I'm up the camera. I'm like, I'm like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, this is going to be crazy for me this year. He's one of the most interesting people. Oh, I believe I, you know, it. I, that's the only time I've ever met him. And, yeah. and you know, I've been in the same room where he was having conversations and I was just like, wow, like this guy is such a wealth of information. Dude. Oh, think about him. He's been around the block for oh, so yeah, long totally. and so many times. Fuck. That's crazy. It's so good. So then what's, you know, as far as that goes, it's like, you got to kind of sprinkle a little bit of what you're time with Diplo is like at the beginning of the podcast it's right. like the schedule is so it's nuts unforgiving to sleep right like right. how how do you feel like you manage it the best like is it I'm sleeping on plans you've discovered a way to do that because I suck at that shit oh I'm really good at it yeah um, I'm also the king of the 15 the 15 minute nap yeah um, which will like keep me going for like two hours yeah sick because um like for instance, like next week we have a ten hour set at a club, back to back carnage actually. What? Yeah. It's a ten hour set. And I plan on being there the entire time. So if I need to like like Wait, what me. are you talking about? Like someone's gonna perform for ten hours straight? Diplo and Carnage back to back. Like five hours and then five hours or like there's no, like back and forth. Ten hours. Ten hours together. of just making music together? Yeah. Dude, what? Yeah, it's at uh, Club Space Super Bowl weekend. It's going to be nuts. Oh, what day do you get in? I just realized. Are I'm, you going? I'm going to Miami, but it's for uh, some Swisher Sweets thing or whatever. Oh, okay. So I'm going to be down there, but I didn't realize the Super Bowl is the same time because I just thought we were going for an Sure. Event. <laughs> 
Uh, I think the 28th. Yeah, me too. So. Cool. We'll have to Maybe link up. Same, or I go to Atlanta first. But yeah, well, let's definitely like yeah. come, come to the set for, yeah, like, that, for an hour. You don't well, stay yeah, for no, I got I got 10 hours of me, man. Yeah. I got, you know, I mean, I could do this shit. My back, I'll wear a back brace. I'm yeah, like, yeah. How, who's going to this show for 10 hours, yeah. yo? It's That's unreal. Do you do they have like full service menus like for food and shit? I'm what sure the there's going to be is? something. Luke, Luke the tour manager, Hooks is like, he is the Not man. for you, for the fucking people. Like, who's going oh, for to them? watch? The, dog, e EDM and dance music and shit is a whole nother level. Yeah. I'm always jealous as fuck coming from a rap world. Like, rappers are dope. Or, I mean, Beyonce and shit, like, it's been incredible. Right, that. But sure. like, when you see the EDM space and the, the production in the way these shows go off, I'm like, man, that shit would be fun as fuck. Right. Like, I want to make that shit look bananas. You know what I mean? Oh, like, it's so great, man. You get fireworks, pyro, people flipping shit, fucking wild costumes and stilts and shit. I'm like, yo, festivals go all the it's way off. nuts. 10 hour show? Yeah, so 10 hour show. It's at a club. It's called Club. I think it's, I don't know which club it is actually. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a club, right? Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I think they're just gonna play house music all day. That's but, uh, crazy. I don't know. They'll probably switch it up. See, Wes is just such the, like the best DJ ever that he can switch it up from hip hop to house to yeah. dubstep to pop to whatever you know. And plus, he's done so many songs that are in like so many different genres. Of course, like, so you just pick from whatever wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be crazy. We're gonna have, we have a big big Super Bowl weekend. Then we're going straight to India, like. We're doing crazy stuff. He's always in India, I feel like. He loves it. You go to India a lot? Um, I've been to India twice. Okay. Um, I've never been with Wes. That'll yeah. be my first time. Um, but yeah, I'm still I love see I've 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 toured like all of your uh, tour you know, I've toured so many cool places that are like very, very like like done up already. Like sure. um that I'm really into cultural stuff now. Like right. we went to Africa last month. Yeah. And I, I like it's crazy. I loved it. Yeah. Because it was just so cultural and like so like not like, like I don't know, man. Like it was just it it's wasn't like the same thing. W, I always you're like at the W in right, you know, New York right, City or some shit. So. Right, exactly. Like that's immersed. cool. Don't get me wrong. Of course, I, I love. Yeah, of course. I love high high lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. Right, but being able to like capture the culture of like certain countries, that's what's badass. Yeah, to me, man. like that. That's super cool to me. I was just having a conversation with someone. I literally brought up Diplo because I, uh, last night we were talking about how a lot of American artists will obviously try to fight the fight in America and become right. the shit here, right? But a lot, like the people that go to these other countries and immerse themselves in that culture and bring their, or pull their culture out and, and create collaboration in that shit, it kills. And I feel like Diplo is like rarely in America besides like Vegas and shit. But like he's always seen in these different places across the planet. And I feel like that shit is sick because it's like you get to be a part of that. They love American music and want to see someone come there and be able to turn it up in a different way. Totally. In somewhere like India, you know what I mean? And bring a whole nother wave of music to that shit. But it's like so, so powerful to see artists do that and get away from here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know what? We really, we really try to do everything we can in each different country. Mm -hmm. We're not the guys that are going to be in the hotel. I As love I'm sure, that. I'm sure I love you, know, you know, we've talked about it. Yeah. But yeah. That's, a, that's really, really cool though. It's like, Oh, I love it. I feel like, is that, do you feel like that's pretty common between like amongst these artists in the EDM space and like the dance music space? It's like, they all seem outgoing as fuck and like willing to right. check some shit out. You know what I mean? Like it depends per artist, you know? Yeah. Some people just like the room service and then I like just go hang out in the yeah. room, which is cool. Right. I mean, I, you know, I can always, I'm always down, you know, bring to out, eat some bring out yeah. Sleep or just like bit. get some actual editing time. I'm yeah. not on a plane, you right. know, but yeah. Damn, man, that's crazy. So, so yeah. yeah, so it's like you, 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 you building this relationship with him. Obviously, it's too good to like stop. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just really great right now. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a reason to yet, and and I really, I really enjoy the team. Like Luke and Eli have become very, very close friends. Yeah. Um, including you know Wes too. Like, like I go over Wes's house like once a week, and we'll just kind of like BS and like you know kind of try to brainstorm content. But he's he he's so busy man like at all times like i never really hate bothering him yeah too too, too much right. you know um but yeah i mean we, we've all become really close again tour family right you know, what we said in the beginning like that's it's just so important um and with our content it's it's a lot of like really organic stuff like like wes is really cool where like he he doesn't want to become like like he's just organically the cool guy right but like he doesn't care about being the cool guy like yeah. we'll mess around so much and like all our really like viral posts have gone have been because we just mess around yeah. like we literally like his his most viewed post um and uh you know 
Wes is shirtless. Diplo is shirtless at all times. Like, Dude's got a bod, man. According to Instagram, he's shirtless. To, right? So our most viewed posts and his most viewed post ever um, was we were in Ibiza and he was like, he took a picture and he was like, he was like standing like this. And, um, you know, we, we took a picture and he, you know, he had like an erection or whatever. You know, he just got in a little water or something. He was yeah. like, he just thought it'd be like funny to post. Um, people don't know if it's real or not to this day. I know if it's real or not. I'm not going to say because I, I, like, I like the mystery. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, dude, it was his most viewed post. It was on like all the talk shows of like, you know, is, is, right. is, is Diplo out of his mind? You know, or is this, this is now like, this is the DJ. Okay. Is that a boner? Is that? Yeah. Fuck and it. it was just, it skyrocketed. Instagram took it down after a couple really? months. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, yeah, it happens. And then there was another really, really funny one, which is, which is like, I'll, like the virality of like, of like posts. Here's a really good story about that is, um, Popeye sandwich everyone everyone knew the trend right yeah and so everyone on twitter instagram whatever was trying to get these popeye sandwiches um after the grant uh, not the grammys the academy awards or something that were in new york um earlier this year right we we uh well i actually wasn't there but he had tried to go to popeye's and get a sandwich um they didn't have any more but he posted on his instagram story that he couldn't get any and so I thankfully threw through a friend I went to college with, or I, like Doug, I Doug, this is funny to me right now. What you're about to say? <laughs> really? Wait, you're about to say you had a plug at Popeyes, right? It's so this th- fucking party with Virgil all over again, Doug. Right, right, right. So through, <laughs> through, and this is like this is like a two week plan that I made. Yeah. So so this guy Jeff hits me up. Um, his fiance is the PR girl for for Popeyes. Oh my god. And she's like, Yo, we love what we did. We'd love to do something, you know, potentially with Wes. Um, just like you know, sending him sandwiches at some point. I go, Cool. We're back in New York for Electric Zoo. Um, why don't we like, you know, why don't you give me like six Popeye sandwiches and I'll like try to come up with something. Right. right. So, so we do electric zoo. Uh, Wes had just come back from Burning Man that day, flew in from Burning Man to electric zoo. Okay. And, um, oh, which is a, a festival. Yeah. Right, festival. Right, right. And, um, so he comes in, he's obviously super tired, like Bernie man, he doesn't sleep because he DJs everything he possibly can and like loves to immerse himself in like new experiences right. or whatever. And, um, so we do that and, um, you know, we party that day at electric zoo. Um, you know, I, 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 I like to party, I like to drink or whatever. Sure. Um, so I'm partying with a bunch of friends and I'm super hungover in the morning. Right. And, um, and so the girl, she comes, um, with Jeff. You know, I say what up to Jeff, and she hands me these sandwiches, um, and I, so now I have to think. I'm like, okay, cool. How are we? How are we going to do something where it could be like super, super funny, right? And so and he knows about the sandwiches or no? He knows. Okay. He knows. It, yeah, he knows I'm going to get them. You know, but like he doesn't know there's like an opportunity. Like Popeyes was super cool, or they're like, hey, we're just gonna, we just want to give it to you. Like you don't have to post about it. Like we're like it's cool. Yeah. Like we just want you to have it. Yeah. As like a goodwill thing. Um, <laughs> so funny. Yeah. And also, you know, with Will, with Will and like products. I mean, Will uh, with uh, with Wes, Wes and yeah. products and stuff. <laughs> like, you know, there's usually some sort of like sponsorship that yeah, goes along with it. So you know, we we don't really you know sometimes people just give us product. We don't ever really post about it, um, but. So yeah, so we get these and we're eating them. We're on, thankfully we're on a PJ to somewhere and uh, you know, we're posting about, or we're not posting about it, but like everyone on, on Instagram is like, oh, I got Popeye sandwiches. Cause, oh, I forgot to mention, they, this is the time where like they were on a standstill for two months. So there was no Popeye sandwiches ever. The, the Popeye's girl goes, these are literally the only six Popeye sandwiches in the US. <laughs> The only six. Dog, this shit is the right. dumbest. I, I mean, I know no, how it's crazy so it was, but like, I thought it was just, like, I thought I for real could pull up and grab some sandwiches and they're like, no, like, I didn't think it was really that. Well, they crazy. actually sold out because they didn't think they were going to go viral. Wow. So they actually sold Ran out. Ran out of stock. Right. And so they stopped production because they needed to like, you know, I guess like, I don't know, do something. I'm yeah, not Popeyes. Right. I don't know. Um, but they didn't have any more. She literally goes, listen, we had to like go through like corporate to get the, like, like dude, this crazy, crazy stuff. Did they come hot? Oh yeah. No, we had Pop- Popeyes made them for us. Like they went to a Popeyes, like, like the closest, like Popeyes, like store and they cooked <laughs> them up for us and then brought them over. Yeah. Yo, what the fuck? So this is Nuts. like Uber Eats just for y'all straight to you from Popeyes. From Popeyes. You're on a jet. Uh, so we go to a jet. Okay. So we get at the hotel and then we go to the jet. Um, and we're all Instagram storing about it. And 
you know, we're like, are like, okay, cool. Is there any opportunity that we can do? You know, they're not, they're not paying us anything like this. Like, could this be like a pop culture moment now? Right. Right. And so uh, Wes, I, there's when I first started with Wes, I, uh, photoshopped, uh, a plane. Yeah. I saw that picture. So that's not real. The tie dye, the tie dye one or the Popeye's oh, one? Oh, the Popeye's one. Yeah. So, so, um, I photoshopped one thing. I photoshopped a tie dye thing before. Okay. And so now Wes thinks I'm like a God photoshopper, which I'm not <laughs> right. at, by any means, right. sure, hard. but he's like, Hey, can you photo, you know, can you do this? Can we make, do something funny with this? Um, so, so he's like, all right, the only, the only way like I would ever like consider posting this is if you Photoshop Popeyes on, you know, on the plane. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, all right, cool. I'll do that. And then he obviously had the bags that I, that I got yeah. him and we took the picture and then, uh, him and Jahan came up with the caption that, you know, Popeyes sent them a plane so they could try the new sandwich or whatever, which is like a flex on its own, but it's yeah. also like so funny cause it's so pop it's culture so, and it's so Diplo. Yeah. Like it's so right. Diplo. Um, um, so everyone believed it. No problem. You know, like that was, it was the easiest, <laughs> like it was the easiest, like con of all time. Yeah. You right, know? right. 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 Um, so yeah, so that it was not real. It was, you know, regular playing. That's like, the funniest shit. Yeah. So we did that. It went viral. That's another one that was on all talk shows, right. on articles. David Spade's talk show brought it up. Like, and he like made a joke about it. Like had like a segment about it. Like, Holy shit. yeah. So it's just, you know, it's crazy stuff. And like, like that's the stuff like and obviously Diplo is just like a genius in anything he does um but so working with him is really really fun because uh, the way we come up with stuff is organic yet it's the most creative stuff because we're just like we're not really trying we're trying to think of like just dumb stuff that right. we can like I guess like come up like we're just trying to think of relatable stuff that everyone would think would be funny right that would also relate to to Diplo in a yeah. way um yeah, so I, you know, it's well, it just keeps him active as fuck and mad keeps relevant because he's yeah. in, he's playing off trends, which is right. what DJs do naturally. You know right. what I mean? Like create totally. trendy shit that people. That's right. so dope. So was the sandwich good? Yeah, no, it was, was it? I had spicy, and then I had the original one. I actually, the the day it came back, um, I was going to. I wanted to surprise my roommates and my neighbors. It was like Super Bowl Sunday, yeah, and I like went at like nine thirty a.m. because I thought like no one would like be at Popeyes. Like, what an obnoxious time yeah, to right, be at Popeyes. Right, right, right. And I waited an hour and a half to get these sandwiches. Oh my god! And I like, I like. I was literally gonna text this Popeyes PR girl and be like, "Yo, can, can you, you host? Yeah, can, can you give you? me a cut line or something?" Right. But uh, <laughs> she, she had a wedding the day before, so I was like, yeah, "All right, I'm not gonna, it. I'm not gonna ruin your honeymoon right. that you're on now." God damn. Um, but yeah, that's me being nice, and I didn't, didn't work out. Yeah. I mean, it worked out because I waited, but like, dude, uh, that shit is funny as fuck to me. Yeah, that's crazy. So it's just stuff like that, yeah, man. It's, it's like just come up with stuff organically with your artists that would be fun that like your your fans can relate to. Well, that also kind of is like something that I feel like maybe. Uh, I'm sure you start to see like you guys pushing that to to your to the other creators that are working with these artists is like finding those niches are it's super important you know what I mean especially right. like the way shit gets delivered so when you when you uh, having gone to full sale because going for, sure like that is is there anything in that school that you were doing then uh, do you credit any of that for what you do now uh maybe my work ethic yeah you know me i've always been a guy that like i really need to be invested in something to like really really try my hardest like i really need to love it mm. um you know i was never the best student in high school um i was never the best student in college even but uh the stuff i was really invested to i really really i really worked my ass off in. right and uh with full sale the classes are weird man like you have four hour classes a day you probably have, like two or three depending on what what it is but you know picture picture having three classes which are each four hours long and excuse me you can have like you can have like a class like from like two to five a.m sometimes or like one to five a.m like they'll literally have class schedules where you have to be at class at 1 a.m what the fuck yeah right because they want to teach you that like you know films film sets can sometimes be overnight and you need to be ready and aware for it i don't, well, I don't well know them have me there from 9 a.m to 5 a.m because that's sometimes what it ends up being sure you know, yeah I'm totally do some odd four hours what it was the fuck not, yeah, so weird so yeah. weird but uh because I would stay up those late nights, it kind of like taught me, I guess, like, I don't know, it kind of like helped me yeah, get sure. like a little head start into like being aware yeah. when it's like 2 a.m. and no one wants to be there and everyone wants to go to sleep. But right. like, you've already done this before. Like you can simulate yourself to it already, mm. you know? So that's dope. I don't know, Full Sail kind of taught me, yeah, it kind of taught me work ethic. Um, 
and I, I really had a good experience there. I feel like I feel like full sail, and I'm just talking about from my experience is all about what you put into it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there there's stuff that like I'll I'll know like in theory how to use it because of full sail, and it will help me. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, dude, if if, if you slack off and at full sail, like cool, like you're wasting your money. Full yeah. sail is expensive. Yeah. Man. Like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Any art school, it's like I agree. Like if you get in there, you need to go above and beyond to like hustle and totally. take advantage of the space like take advantage of the gear they have take advantage of all that shit because it's like that's only there for the time you're paying for tuition and then it's gone and you gotta figure life out you know totally. what I mean? yeah and, and e- even now like i i went to go speak at full sale like last month and uh just try to talk to some students and uh hopefully i'm gonna come back we've been talking a little bit about like me coming back but but that's uh awesome. yeah I, I just want to help out man yeah, you know man. like because i feel like i have in Full Sail, everyone wants to be like a director. Right. Like they want to be in movies yeah. and TV shows. But I feel like my skill set, where I've like, where my path has taken me, there's a whole new like lane of what you can do now, especially with social media and content that like I feel like is so important. And that's a that's a totally viable career path. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. especially Facts. for what we all do. You yeah. Know? Especially course. for a lot of you guys do. Like, it's all it's all. There's so like this is. And we're just at the beginning of what like really content right. and social media. There's always going to be a need for this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, even even in your career, I'm sure you've seen like like five years ago versus now, like changes, like, man. dude. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, even with TikTok coming out now, like that's changing the game as a whole. Everyone wants to be on TikTok, and uh, yeah, 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 I love it. It's fucking exciting. I shit. love it. It's crazy though, know. you know, because like TikTok is so like. Anyone under twenty one, I feel like no one really gets TikTok. Right. Like I, dude, I I hardly get TikTok. Oh, I, don't, I, I really love get TikTok. It. I'm fucking about it. I'm about I, it. See, I, I need to learn how to use it better because, like, you know, because now like making the content's a whole other level. Like that's yeah. So I'm talking because I, I I like I go on TikTok because it's funny. Yeah, it's a you know, like shit. I loved Vine. Yeah, I loved it. Um, but you know, making TikTok and like doing like like we have this kid Moses on our team who's like the internet. Like, like yeah, he like lives Dil- for that shit. This guy Dylan Francis. Um, yeah. He, Oh, Sean, really? Oh, that's who we always talk about? Yeah. Our homie Sean Sauce is... Dave's talking. Yeah, because so our homie Sean, he was on the podcast before. Okay. He's like a social media nerd and, and had like a million followers on Vine and, sure. and stuff. But he went to TikTok too. And now he's been helping out with like a couple people. I'll tell you after this, but like building their profiles and shit. But sure. he, he took his account from zero to half a million. Like, And, and I'm like, what the fuck? And we're watching the content. It, but he's doing like prank videos that are like for kids. Like when we watch the pranks, I'm like... This shit ain't real, right? And then right. It, you you're watching it, and you're like, but the kids love it because it's like, oh wow, that prank's funny as fuck, or whatever. But like, he always talks about this dude that you're talking about, Moses. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if they collaborate or what, but they like know each other. I don't know, but yeah, Moses is. I'm just gonna I'm gonna gas you up, Moses, right now. Go for it. Fuck. This guy, Moses Alexander. Yeah. Um. So Dylan Francis texted me. He's an EDM artist. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know this dude. Yeah, yeah. So so he hits me up. He texts me. Um. This guy Brandon connected me with him, and he's like, "Yo, um, I really need someone. I need someone that knows the internet. You know, <laughs> all these trends are going on." And I'm like, "Cool, dude. Like, I've been talking with Moses about like you know trying to get him on some gigs and stuff." Yeah. And I was like, "Cool, I got you, dude. Like, no problem." And within a week. Like, you know, Dylan texted me like, yo, Moses is the Cracking truth. Off with the shit. Right. Um, but I, I, yeah, Moses, just like Sean, I believe in Moses so much. Like that guy is a creative, like genius when yeah. it comes to social media, internet stuff. Right. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, he, he's someone who's even super happy with Curza, you know, like we, we, he just does creative, man. Like we handle everything else. Like I'm, I love I'm, it. I'm team Moses, you yeah, know, for he's sure. team Curza and that's like, that's the perfect fit. You yeah. know, like we want guys that like, you know, are like super, super dope like that. No, that's fucking um, fire, bro. That's amazing. Yeah. So Mo- Moses is great. I love it. It's, yeah. it's, it's good to see. Thank you for sharing your story, man. Cause it's just crazy as fuck. It's like, yeah, yeah. what a. I would. I did so, not so know your path was paths. that shit. Yeah, I know, it's right? Like weird, right? That's my favorite part about it. Is you learn about all this shit. It's like you see these people come in, and I would have never guessed you did fucking Ninja Warrior shit. Right. You know what I mean? To get yeah. to this point, like that's so crazy. I don't know. Do you feel like we miss anything? Uh no, because I go on these rants, as I'm sure you see. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, right. Uh, no, I think I think we're I think we're good. I. I, I yeah man I commend you it's it's a lot of work touring being on the road living that life shit it's, yeah, it's, it's brutal it's brutal as fuck sometimes bags. yeah I don't know I've I've <laughs> been there shit's a lot yeah, but yeah. but it's amazing it's crazy what doors you can open up with that shit um, right. before we leave there's a hashtag so I basically tell all my guests that to pick a hashtag right and then I tell everyone to go to your Instagram what's your Instagram uh, at the Joe Larkin. Okay, at the Joe Larkin. You're going to tag me in whatever your most recent image is by the time whoever's listening to this right now is listening to what I'm telling them to do. Sure. 
go to your most recent post and they're gonna tag me at Ben Rovers World and okay. they're gonna put this hashtag that you pick so that we both know that they listen to the whole podcast all the way to this point. Okay. That way, like a year from now, we'll see that shit pop up. I'm like, damn, someone just listened to the podcast. So whatever the fuck you want, it could be anything you want. So I've thought about this one because I, I watch the yeah. podcast or listen to the podcast and I'm gonna do a, a homage to Ben. I want you to hashtag is the man. Is the so man? Ben first real world is the man. Ooh, okay, shit. I gotcha. like that. That's a good one. And I just realized I totally forgot we do our... <laughs> We have the community got to ask you questions. Yeah, fuck, I fucked up. Let's do it. Uh, Patreon, we do the Q and A experience, so uh, we got a couple questions for you to answer. My bad, guys. I almost fucking forgot about you. Damn, we are in this shit, bro. <laughs> this is a good. This is, we're talking for a minute too. It's almost have two we? hours. Oh man, this is good though. Um, all right, you can knock these out quick. Josh Adams says, uh, "How did you land your first contract to be an official media company for a festival? Did you already have a personal festival portfolio?" Well, yeah, I guess like, have you? You know, is there a way that you were able to kind of lock in the first one as the company? Yeah, so we, we had done a couple um, smaller festivals, kind of like in like C markets or whatever, and uh, we had made just recaps um, of the festival. Um, but yeah, you know, slowly through there, you, you get bigger and bigger and more and more festivals will come at you. Right. Um, but yeah, you just got to build the reel a little bit. You know, I, I, I've done festivals that festivals that have like 3000 cap. Right. Sure. Um, so, you know, we, we send them those reels and then just like how I first started, we had that little video and I pitched them what we can do. Yeah. Same concept. Right. Love that. We have this video. Let's pitch them what we can do and let's show what our creators can do too. Cause sometimes our creators like do different, um, different stuff with different people, mm. but it's still in the role to actually do it for us. Right. 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 So yeah, we'll, we'll bring that kind of method. That's dope. Yeah. Um, let's see how Paul shoots video says, how do you spice things up from festival to festival to keep it fresh for you? Um, every festival is a different creative that we like. Um, we, we also, we're getting really into like visual effects and like, like after effects, our guys. Yeah. Um, so we'll do that. I feel like that's like also like getting pretty big, like within our, within our scene, like oh, people yeah. are just getting into yeah. like 40 like spaces. It's, crazy. 3D. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll come in and we'll really, really, I think what we really do is we nail like the brand's vision for what they want, but we also have like a certain aesthetic with like each curves of video. Like, like we make like banger videos if we want to, but right. we can also make really, really like cool, like, you know, beautiful festival sceneries right. if we want. So I feel like with Curza, we've always had a certain style if you watch our videos and we just bring that style to each festival mm. video. Festival videos have gotten stale. Right. Um, there's a lot of corporate kind of BS like, girls with flower you know yeah, whatever yeah. like hands up Holding smiles hands whatever right. everyone's seen it yeah how are we going to do it differently but still nail your topics um so we bring that kind of like mindset right to everything we do I love we're that. not we're not there to make the same video that right. you've seen every single time no nah, that's solid yeah um, that's solid diversity too uh let's see neutral p uh d I don't even know how the fuck to say his name. Dama King something. Oh, some shit. Do, yeah, with the K, right? Yeah, he fought. He he like DM'd me. Really nice guy. Oh, that's dope. He was. We've already kind of covered it. He's saying, how do you manage Curza and like artists that you talk to? Who's taking point when talking to the artist? Generally? Right. How do, I mean, we've kind of laid into that. It's like, like built off relationships. Um, you know, we each of us have different relationships with different artists. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes and also based on availability. But we really I think with Curza, we really try to take um, a personal approach to every artist we do. We don't right. want them to feel like they're just hiring like a company and they're paying extra money for what, you know, like yeah. for why are we doing this? Right, right? Right, right. We want them to feel that we and, and we, you know, we bring we bring the worth. Um, with it, but we want them to feel that like they're hiring like a collective of people that like you can trust yourselves on and that you know you're gonna get the good, yeah. good stuff every time. Right. Um, last question, Neutral P says, is there anything that you're still trying to improve on? Um, if not, is there something that you've wanted to have a go at to improve your work? Love your work, man, by the way. And then they Thank did you. this. A little fucking Shaka. hang loose shit. Yeah, whatever it's called. <laughs> we, were just, we were just in Hawaii for Thanksgiving for like a month. So like now I just like, I'm like always like hang loose, dude. I but go there at top of the month. I'm like stoked. Dude, it's going to be man. sick. Yeah, Where are you man. going? Uh, Kauai. Oh, sick. Yeah. yeah it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be dope. Um, yeah, so to answer that question, what was the question again? Sorry. Is there anything that uh, you feel like uh, you're still trying to improve on it? If not, is there anything you want to try to experiment with? I think for me, it's like a personal life, which mm -hmm. I, I think you guys probably touched upon a couple of times. Like I, I work myself to the bone and I love working, but like I have sacrificed, you know, I, listen, I'm super grateful. I get to do totally. everything yeah. you know, I, I really want to do. But, um, you know, I, I've sacrificed 
an entire personal life because of it. You know, I have core friends and, uh, you know, I'll date around every now and then, but mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I'm always, I don't know, like I'm, I'm always on tour. Like there's no, I, I, I have so many, like I meet so many people on the road that I'm not saying they're superficial relationships, but I meet them once and that's it. You don't have time to grow like right. actual friendships or relationships or, or whatever. Um, you know, even like with like visiting home, right. you know, that shit's so tough. Like my parents even leveled me or like my sister, like even leveled, she was like effing pissed when I missed this Thanksgiving. She was like, dude, like, you know, what are you doing? Right. Like, how many more do we have with everyone? You know? Yeah. Damn. And so it's like, you know, that, that really, it like, fuck, it made me want to cry a little yeah. bit. It fucked me up, dude. Um, cause she's totally right. You know, there, there's, there's no excuse. You know, there's like times when I'm in LA that like I could be visiting home. Right. But it's also really tough because like I'm, I'm trying to run this company and like, you know, we're in entertainment where like, you know, Wes could hit me up and want him to come to the studio and I don't want to say no to him. Right. Um, because, you know, I want, I want to create content with him. I'm not a really entertainer or anything, but like also like as a homie and yeah. like as someone that like he <laughs> trusts me to always get content. I don't want to say no, you know? So I'm not necessarily on call, but I always want to be ready for whatever. Um, Me being in Florida is great, but it also, it's not the best like workplace for me, you know? Um, LA, I feel more at home and I feel like ready to go. So, but yeah, you know, I I love my parents and of course I want to be there for everything. And like, they're they're pretty understanding, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's tough, man. Yeah, Yeah. I I feel it. It's it's not, that's one of my big goals for this year is like- That's my new year's resolution is to go home more. Yeah, just take more time. Yeah, yeah, try to live a life or whatever, like- right. It's crazy, but uh, yeah. man, you killed this shit. I appreciate Thanks, you coming man. on. This has been fucking awesome. So fucking I'm glad, I, I'm glad I did the podcast uh, justice. We, we appreciate it. You fucking murdered this shit. Sick, so, man. Uh, everyone links to follow him and shit will be in the thing. Make sure to put the hashtag and all that shit. And uh, that's it, I think, right? Yeah, we did it. Good. Thumbs up to end this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's it for episode 152. Huge shout out to Joe for coming on the show and sharing all that information. It's amazing. If you want to ask any of our guests questions on this show, you can do that when you become a Patreon member. Shout out to everyone that is already supporting the Patreon page that helps us keep the lights on in here and make us do more episodes. We appreciate all you guys. Join the homies.com if you want to do that. And uh, yeah, we'll give you a little alert before we do an interview and you can ask them questions. I think that's it. This was a good episode. Next week's going to be a banger too. And make sure to tune into the Morning Roast episodes every motherfucking Wednesday. Yeah. All right. I'm done. Bye.